Hello, Crisis Actors. It is not Brett. It is me. I'm your guest host today, Kellen. And we've got a wild episode. This is episode 594 of Pop Culture Crisis. Uh, if you did not watch the Culture War this morning, we were talking about all kinds of crazy conspiracies. We're going to continue it here today. Um, we're going to talk about TikTokers. We're going to talk about the CIA. A whole mess of stuff. Remember that every $20 super chat that you guys send will be read immediately. I will interrupt these guys no matter what they're talking about, even if it's groundbreaking. All right, I will interrupt them and read your super chat. Um, to my left, we have the wonderful Shane Cashman, if you want to introduce yourself. Yep, I'm actually Mary Morgan in AI. <laughs> this is really good AI that Tim Pool just purchased. Uh, it makes it sound like Shane Cashman, but it's Mary, and it's good to be here. Nice, nice. Yeah, welcome, yeah, Mary. Thank you. Mary, welcome. And uh, to my right, we have Ian Carroll. What's up, guys? Stoked to continue our conversation from earlier. We had a really cool conversation yeah, dude, earlier. That was so much fun. Yep. I'm glad we could keep going. There's so much more to talk about. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, the first thing we're going to be talking about today is uh, we've got Netflix doing some weird stuff with AI. Um, so there's this new true crime documentary called What Jennifer Did. And there's these photos that they used throughout the documentary that are seemingly AI generated. Uh, I've got it pulled up right here, and if you look at her hands, they don't they don't look like real fingers. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the crazy stuff that AI's been doing recently, but it's it's getting scary. And now that you see it with like mainstream media, and I don't mean like CNN or Fox, but like Netflix is one of the biggest companies in the world. Now that they're doing it, I mean. It's just they're coming for jobs. Yep. You know? They're 100% coming plus, for jobs. Plus, they're just lying. They're coming for your brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they really are. They yeah. want you to not believe in anything. Because the, the second that you can say that, that that just scared the crap out of me. And I've been on the show <laughs> two dozen times. Thank you for that. But uh, the second that they can say, they, they can dismiss anything in the news as if that's possibly fake, then yeah. anything can be fake. It's crazy, dude. So this documentary revolves around Jennifer Pan, who's a convicted kill for hire attack uh, on her parents. And 28 minutes into the documentary, her high school friend Nam Nguyen is described as bubbly, happy, confident, and a very genuine person. His words are accompanied by a series of relevant, relevant photos. But as I said earlier, if you really look at the photos and look at the fingers, <laughs> like it's <someone, laughs> What? Maybe, maybe she's... Uh... What, a burn victim or a <laughs> uh, yeah. genetic mutant of some sort? Like maybe, you know, we don't know. Yeah. Do we know? Maybe uh, if maybe she's AI, from the future. She's a robot yo. and she needs a generated body. Exactly. These are the things we should be asking. These are the real questions. <laughs> I, I don't know if I like the burn victim hand or if I like the weird pointed fingers on the left. Yeah. They're, they're both. <laughs> I mean, either way, they're clearly testing the waters to see what they can get away with. Right. Because there does come a day when they can actually produce whole films. They can produce whole pieces of reality that, Yo, that, seriously. this way. That's what I was saying. So Tim's been uh, messing with that AI song generator a lot. Yep. I'm like, think right. about commercials, right? Right. So they've yeah. got the, I think OpenAI has been teasing their new like movie creator yep. where with like a basic prompt. They'll give you like a 30 second like film and it looks super realistic. Right. Pair that with the song generation. You don't need humans anymore. Right. You need someone to just publish. What do you think about AI just not being able to make hands? Like, isn't that an interesting it's defect? Actually, so I'm no expert, but yeah. what I my understanding of that is a really interesting sort of like core reason of how AI works. Because the, the, the thing that makes AI so fast is that it's generative from like base principles. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean it's generative from the concept of an, a being with a skeleton, with muscles, with nerves, with right. like it's not building a human from from knowledge from of physics. Right. It's building a human from knowledge of millions of images, right. which just fundamentally makes it create reality in a different way than our right, brains right. do. So it, it's not, it's a surface level, it's a skin suit. Yeah. It's a digital skin it's suit. It's literally a skin suit. That is just slightly off. Yeah. And it's interesting that we have this little grace period of being able to look at hands to know yeah. it's AI. And how long are we gonna have that for? <laughs> exactly. And I'm kind of worried that we're talking so much about a bunch of bullshit issues this year and not talking about how we're about to enter like the AI singularity yes and we have a bunch of 80 year olds leading us there i can't, I can't remember when dolly first came out like i think that was the first one that i remember everyone yeah. was just messing with but mm -hmm. it's probably been 14 months 15 months yeah and just yeah how we've gotten from point a to point b is just 
It's insane. It's and don't forget the Google scandal earlier with the Google right. AI Lambda image right. generator that was all racist and was trying to like rewrite reality. Did you no. know about that? It was so. No, no but I was going to say the Google <clears throat> thing that I've seen this week is if you search before 2023 colon and then do your search query, you get an entirely different set of results than what you did now. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know you could. I've never AI, used that it's command. It's all AI powered now. Yep. Yeah. 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 I've been saying like I call this the post reality because we're in a, in a place where you're not going to be able to tell the difference between reality and, and this digital reality right yeah. and so you can believe anything you want you know we talk about a lot of weird stuff and if you want to keep believing something even though you know maybe deep down it's, it can be disproven you can go down any rabbit hole to prove that point even yep. though you know it's all fake right yeah. or looking at wars happening whether it's in gaza ukraine there's people posting videos that are clearly fake Yep. They use that to support their narrative of, of whatever they're pushing, right? There was the uh, the video of like a car fire that people were talking about. Mm. That yep. was fake. You know, there, it doesn't have to be AI. There were people sharing videos of some video game with a yeah. helicopter, and they were saying that was real. Yep. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh, what game was I know what you're talking I don't about. I the game, but like we can't tell the difference. And then the other yeah. side of that, too, is that like now things that are real can be called fake. Exactly. Right. It's just, it's just every, and, and where do you have any authority? Like who, who can regulate that? And do we want someone to regulate it in the first place? I know to even like, I'm so anti-regulation, but there's a point like, it's like, I also don't agree in murder and I we yeah, should regulate exactly right? not, mur not murdering people. I, this is a, a problem. Yeah. It's going to destroy humanity. I think we're going to progress ourselves out of well, existence. I mean, and morality doesn't exist for, I'd say a majority of the human race. Yeah. So it's, this is like, true. <laughs> it's like, it's like the, the worst people are using the like AI just to manipulate people and they do not care. Yeah. Right. They don't care. They're probably laughing. It's, right. it's a game to them. And with what we're looking at here, this is a lady who they want, they made her look happy. Right. When she's not even, isn't that part even fake? That from what I, I read, it looks glossed over. I, I tweeted this out months ago, and I'm like, "What is this weird kind of phenomenon with AI-generated photos where it looks kind of like glossed over, right? Yeah. Like a semi-gloss was almost. It, it, yeah, it looks like that. off texturing, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, but dude, it's wild. If this is it. actually kind of uh, central to you know the movies Dune that just came out. Yeah, from the books by Herbert. This is like central to his whole plot and his whole world. Mm. Is he's actually wrote those stories into a future that's like way in the future, but you notice there's no computers in those stories. Interesting. And it's because they had what was called the Butlerian Jihad, which was his way of saying computers are going to progress to a point where they're going to take over the world and there's going to be a war between people and computers mm. and com people won. Right. And they had this whole like destroy all things that think like the mind all, right. all machines that are like a mind wow. there and then they're like culturally for all humanity they all resent it wow. and that's why you wind up with that civilization that they show in the movies wow. where they've got people that are functioning the way a computer would because they are fundamentally understand the danger of like essentially ai what side do you think elon would be in that war I think Elon would be on the side of the machines. I do too. I mean, he's literally, I mean, he has an interesting argument that like yeah. AI is coming. And so we yeah. should make ourselves the home for AI right. so that we are essential to its evolution. Right. But like, bro. The, I was going to say the first, you know, kind of example of this, we'll see where any Amazon warehouses. I'll be like, oh, it won't be that big of a deal because it's just yeah. products. But if you remember, Amazon has a whole like pharmaceutical department now. Like you can order your prescription meds right. from right. Amazon. So it's like, what happens when they have AI to like, make their warehouses, which are already controlled by robots, yeah. right? What if it happens when the AI just looks like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not, right. I'm not yeah. fulfilling this order, right. you know, yeah. and people don't get their insulin. Or if it's hacked. Or, or what happens if, if they start medicine. fulfilling orders that weren't made of Boom. like delivering this package yeah. full of whatever yeah. like it's substance like you get a to thousand that doses one. of insulin and they're like, Sarah, yeah. what kind of, what sure. kind of operation you got going yeah. on? This is another like, reason, this. another <laughs> reason why we should go against big pharma yeah. And having anything to do with Amazon and these robot facilities, because they're gonna, yeah, at some point they're gonna just put fentanyl on everything. Um, so we'll we'll get back to the AI stuff. But the next story I wanted to talk about is actually good. It's a tweet from our good friend Mary Morgan, and um, I know you guys are huge Taylor Swift fans. Yeah. I, I yeah. just tell one of the greatest psyops. I live for her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we're seeing we're seeing something kind of crazy because. Um, the media just is kind of turning on her. It seems like it's as, as after she's been like the NFL sweetheart for the past year. She released her new album uh, last night. It's got what thirty one songs. Mm -hmm. We were talking about yeah, it earlier, yeah, yeah. right? So uh, Mary posted a slew of headlines uh, that came out today, and I'll, I'll read them for you guys. Taylor Swift, the tortured poets department review, a rare misstep. Arriving at the peak of her imperial phase, Swift's eleventh studio album is surprisingly flat and at times cringeworthy. Ooh. Taylor Swift's The Torture Poets Department is stuck in the past. It's solid, but underwhelming effort from a pop star at the peak of her powers. Is that prowess or powers? 
powers. Taylor Swift, the tortured uh, poet's department, an under is underwhelming and clunky, and uh, her new album's here. It's proof that she needs to take a break. Dang. So, um, are that's we winning? It's, it's, I mean, it's like, reverse psychology. You think that's what it is? <laughs> <laughs> They're in bed with Taylor. Oh, yeah, 100%. the corporate press always is. Dude, uh, it was making me wonder because we, you know, this morning we were talking about musicians and everything, and like, where do you think she stands in all that? Right. I mean, she she doesn't. I don't think there's like any like illegal controversy going well, on. Well, she's with directly signed with Lucy and Grange. She's she is like Lucy and Grange's later latest like poster child, and he's been talking. He's mm -hmm. he was teasing her for president twenty years down the line, and he's the guy that's directly named in the lawsuit. Lucy and Grange right. oh, is okay. P Diddy's manager. Like that's Lucy right. and Grange okay. owns Universal Music, and Universal Music produced thirty three out of one hundred of the top one hundred songs last year, mm. one third of the top one hundred Billboard songs last year, and so Taylor Swift is like six or six or seven of those songs. Right. Do you think Do you think she was aware of any of this stuff of going the P Diddy on? stuff? It's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. I think it's hard for her not to. I mean, yeah, she's, she's not a smart just, person. She's smart, and she's not. She didn't just come out of nowhere because she's a. She's third really generation. good friends with Ice Spice. Well, that that That's is a whole, weird. We should get into that too. But That's like some weird I'm, shit. Even before the music stuff, she's third generation banker. Yep. Right. Like her family has been presidents of banks. Yep. Forever. Um. So like, she understands you're the game. In a world of money and power, you're born into the. And it's not just like your parents. It's been generational power and wealth. I don't know. I I'm, feel like it's hard for her not to know. I mean, the real things. question, the conspiratorial question is, was she groomed to be a media figure from the how, first how place? How old right. was she when she, like that Young. first, when she was a country star, like two drops on my guitar, was she above 18? Oh, no. I, I, I don't think so. Younger than that. I mean, I wasn't following her back then, yeah, but I don't think I so. Think and that's the that. earliest I remember of her. Which would also fall in line with the Usher stuff in Diddy, which would also fall in line with the Justin Bieber stuff. stuff. So that was what, about... 2010-ish, maybe right. earlier. I mean, the Swifties in the audience are so mad at us right now, yeah. but like, it's, See, a, the money stopped. it's a legitimate yeah. question. I'm, the money stopped, and that says a lot about Taylor Swift. Listen, like, How dare she's you? obviously a very talented artist, but to, to have the power that she has, either mm. she's doing something like with like the hurts in her music brainwashing yeah, her, the right. listeners, yeah. or there's something else going on artificially pushing her. Yeah. And it's not a testament to her being a great artist or a bad artist. It's just like, I don't. I can't think of another artist that's on top of the world like she is. It's like mm -hmm. Beatles level. Well, we've yeah. clearly seen over the last years, not just with Diddy, with like with Kanye, with Michael Jackson, with all these other artists. We've seen how if you you don't necessarily have to play ball, but you at least have to be the kind of person that they're okay with being on top. Yeah. Even if you're the most talented person in the world, you're not allowed to be on top if you're going to talk the way with Kanye was talking. Right. Like you're not allowed to be on top if you're going to be Michael Jackson and take on Sony. Not right. a chance. They'll and, kill you. And, and they'll. Go and ahead. they'll make you like a victim. Like what currency, you know, victimhood is currency. Yeah. And look at Taylor's been a constant victim. Well, oh, I was just going to say the Scooter Braun. Is the Scooter Braun? Scooter Braun. It yeah. could be Kanye and her. You know, no matter what, she's always Maybe kind of been a victim. Is. You know, it's a good point. And now she's a victim again. I mean, well, who knows how she's going to feel about the critics. We talked she about on Monday that it, it's like an easy cash grab right now is being a victim. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you want to be big on the internet, yeah. what's the first thing you do? You're a victim of something. Complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yeah, with the Scooter Braun stuff, I, I saw one, someone said girls like Taylor Swift so much because it's comfortable. Yeah. I will I say, it's like, interesting. I will say though, it is, kind of gangster that she re-recorded everything right like that part yeah that must not have it's she's definitely a, her own actor in some ways right, right. Like, like there's some playing her own games yeah some autonomy perhaps or maybe that's just part of the you know <laughs> the be. way it's supposed Could to be. look you have to I, I just have a problem of questioning i call it like his this cubism of like you have to look at it from every angle yeah. but it drives me insane you know and that's why i have my own issues in my brain but like <laughs> that's how i see it. like i wasn't thinking i wasn't thinking that taylor was a, a big psyop when everyone was talking about her being a psyop you know for the right super during bowl. the super bowl and stuff but i think it's possible that she could have been like an organic victim of psyops like yeah. they all get like absorbed into the narratives and she's obviously political, although she tried not to be for years, and she yeah. became political. So, you know, so th that's how it goes. This, uh, this is not the account you are looking for with a $20 Super Chat. It says, she was 16 and signed by Toby Keith. Thanks, homie. Appreciate yeah, that, that yeah. context. Yep. I don't know if there's any controversy with Toby Keith. Not that I, I know mean, of. is he the guy that just passed away? No. 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 Who no. was the guy that just passed away? I don't know. A big country star. I can't think of his name right now. But... Um, Toby Keith. Oh wait, he did just pass away. You're right. Was Toby February fifth, two thousand twenty-four. Okay, so okay. I don't know. Maybe there, maybe there's something. Maybe there's a rabbit hole to go down oh, there. Geez. Interesting. But um, something we stumbled across today, which is is, is kind of nuts, is uh, the Joe Rogan experience, which everybody knows. Yeah. Um, 
he just had Tucker Carlson on, and when, there's no clip to play here. But if I can highlight down <laughs> here, the amount of views this episode has gotten in 12 hours is uh, something is afoot, Suspicious. right? So this is the biggest <laughs> podcast in the world, other than maybe like the Caller Daddy podcast, right? Yeah. I don't I don't know the numbers, but I it's safe to assume Joe Rogan's way bigger. But 4,000. 398 views in 12 hours. So now, now maybe, maybe it's uh, to give YouTube the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's a glitch. He's just too popular. He broke the platform. It's got to catch up. Yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> there's something going on here. But I mean, Tucker Carlson, I mean, the amount of views he's getting on X. Him alone, yeah. He combined pulls. with Joe Rogan's power like that, it's, over the last few years. What, what's going on here? Yeah, that, that should be a millions. It's probably just dumb machines right like because like i'm thinking about it now at first i was like maybe they're suppressing it because they don't want tucker to talk no the whole world's seeing it right because this will this always backfires yeah because the second these two guys even tweet about wow we're at four thousand views after 12 hours yeah strike sand effect kicks in and those tweets happened hours ago already so it's like just since those hours for us to have all seen those tweets and like right well i was gonna say i didn't know this episode happened until i saw people complaining about the view counter that is a good point so But, you know, there, there's been with Tim Cast, there's been a, a, and other creators, honestly, yeah. this week, there's been policy changes and a lot of people have been impacted. So I'm wondering if it was not just policy change, but they really broke something on the back end of YouTube. Could be. That's very possible. I mean, with their AI auto detect or whatever it is. I hear from like Tim subscribers, especially to IRL, that they're saying like even though they're subscribed, have notifications on it, they never go off and yeah. they never see the, the it's show true. go live. Dude, yeah, I mean, I work here and I don't get the notifications. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's, like, it's like I know I know to click the bell, I know to be subscribed to every right. channel, and I still don't get them. I'll be on the homepage waiting for it, and I'll refresh, 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 right. and it still won't show up. So do you think it's like their soft way of like trying to like maybe we can suppress it a little bit? Well, it is twenty twenty four, and they're they got to get warmed up for some yeah. real suppression. You got a little it's, election going I mean, on. Yeah. We were talking about yeah, just like right before we went live, we were talking about how twenty twenty four did not feel like an election year until like two weeks ago. Yeah, and yeah, then all started. this craziness started happening, mm-hmm. and now you've got Tucker on Joe Rogan, and I think this is his first appearance. So, yeah. yep, that's a huge interview. That's it, it's massive. Yeah, that's it's like massive. Worldly interview. Yeah, two big counterculture icons but people would look at them both and there's people who, who would be like so they, they think tucker is a cia you know or yeah or you know so it's like one of those funny ways of looking at it where maybe this is the cia working to make him bigger through the counterculture kind of because i'm talking about the wild scenes mm-hmm. uh, from laurel canyon where you see the things they did back in the in the 60s to make uh narratives about people to make them seem like they're actually counterculture right they would uh, a quick example would be uh the actor robert mitchum his, his whole uh, identity was the bad guy of Hollywood because yeah. he was the first celebrity arrested with marijuana mm. in like the 50s or 60s. If you look read this book and you look at certain documents, it would seem that they planted that weed on him on purpose to c- help create this atmosphere of him being a bad boy, which all then wrapped up into the counterculture stuff out of Laurel Canyon in terms of like uh, the hippie movement and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying when you know stuff like that, like we talked about earlier, when you know about Operation Northwoods, you kind of apply this web of suspicion to everything. Was it you, Ian, or was it you, Shane, that were talking about uh, like just the government overreach on him when he went to Russia for the Putin interview? Me, yeah. Ian, yeah, yeah he, ta- he talked about that. Tucker has talked openly in his interviews about how he didn't tell anyone about the interview in advance um, except for through like a signal chat with one specific person, like the one contact kind of. And then the CIA and NSA were tapping his phones and then they leaked that to the press specifically to like try to blow the whole trip up and stuff. Like he had pretty compelling evidence and confidence that it was clearly intel agencies. It's still nuts to me that we know what we know from Edward Snowden. (laughs) No one cares. I mean, that's what it seems like. When revealing a crime is treated as a crime, you're being ruled by criminals. One, the treatment of Snowden, but two, to like just still sit here and know that this whole show is being, you know, like they're listening yeah. to me on all of our iPhones, all of our computers. Like there's nothing to know that's going it. on. It's, yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. Maybe that's why it, people are apathetic and about and it. And this is just nothing. These phones, like, cause like they have Lockheed Martin satellites mapping yeah. the it's globe. True. They can literally, literally just rewind earth and events around earth. Yeah. You know, like you can go look up the, at the global mapping. I forget the whole name for it, but you can look it up and they have a weird thing on Lockheed Martin's website about these maps, uh, th- about the satellites mapping the globe uh-huh. and they can just see anything, you yeah. know, like Trump released that picture of, uh, 
the bomb when they took out some terrorist, I forget who it was, he, he tweeted out the image and people were like, what is this? How do you have this? And it was from one of those Lockheed type spy satellites that yeah. has, it can look at anything yeah. <laughs> with, with, with great detail. So you know where it's safe. The phones are obviously being listened to by you name it. There's probably a whole bunch of people with their fingers in it. And they've been doing this forever because you've got COINTELPRO. We talked about Hoover earlier. Yep. Hoover did COINTELPRO. Literally. Well, but they shut it down, obviously. Like they told sure. us they shut it for down. Sure. Yeah, so it's, it's totally, clearly done. Yeah. They would they never do that anymore. It's not called Apple or anything now yeah. or Google. Uh, <laughs> like, it, stopped, it stopped in the 70s. Just to clarify, I don't want to spread any disinformation <laughs> this year. But, but uh, man. <laughs> Shane, this one's for you. The Lore Lodge tra- chatted with $20 and says, I need to know the panel's opinions on the flat earth. Also, Rogan is bigger than Call Her Daddy, yes. And whoever reads this needs to give Brett a smooch on the cheek for me. Well, he's not here. <laughs> he's, at the, uh, he's at the clinic uh, doing... You know, doing certain things, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, flat earth. Uh, flat earth. Said, we're talking said, about that. That was Lore Lodge. That was Lore Did Lodge. Did I not just mention Lore Lodge that before? Is, yeah, it's yo, so funny. Shout out to those guys. <laughs> I have watched them. Um, so flat earth. I I am agnostic. I'm I'm a Christian, and I believe in God. When it comes to everything else, I'm agnostic. I don't know anything, but it's very possible that uh, the way we perceive Earth is not the way that we've been told. My take on it is simply that. <clears throat> There's probably hundreds of thousands of people that work in tech jobs around the world that deal with things like cell phones. And you could think of a, a ton of different jobs that like, if I build this device with the science that, that would support flat earth in mind, it won't work. Right. That's and, you, point. and you can't teach. And so it's like, you don't need to go to like all these proofs and stuff. It's just that like, if a conspiracy theory is gonna be a conspiracy theory, you need to be able to like control the information flow. And we have enough jobs out there that like, I do this job, I make this product that only works because this science makes it work. And every single person that has ever done science relating to cell phones, satellites, airplane, et cetera, like all those technologies, all those people have to be in on a conspiracy theory Mm -hmm. in order for that to be real. And so I still like, even then I'm like, okay, 1% of me is still ready to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I try to never believe something for sure, for sure, for sure. But, but that's one that I feel pretty confident. Like, and so here's the interesting part. A lot of people that are on on the flat earth train are very correct that things like NASA right. and moon and right. uh, space station footage is sus, yep. super sus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And NASA does fake footage. And there are, ha- there are lots of tapes from NASA where you can see that they are literally on wires. Right. Um, and so it's like, are there other explanations for why they would be giving us fake ISS footage? Right. It's like, well, so, one's called aliens. Totally. totally I totally agree with, with <laughs> Maybe. that. Maybe. And I, I don't know, you know, there's people who would be like, the earth is more egg shaped. Right. But I just think the possibility, well, anything's possible, right? Yep. And when it comes to the moon and stuff. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to bring up. I was going to say like, uh, so th- I, I'm writing a book that's coming out soon for, through Timcast Media. And one of the profiles is Alex Jones. And I asked him about the moon. Yeah. You know, because I'm, what, what is Alex Jones? I want to know what moon? he thinks. <laughs> He's like, we went to the moon. But uh, the footage you saw on TV was not the real moon. He was like, the moon is a graveyard of astronauts. And Mm -hmm. if they showed you the real moon, you just see dead bodies everywhere. Interesting. Because people keep failing. This is according to him and and people he claims to know in NASA. I'll also preface that by saying NASA's also hired, got a lot of Nazis and shit. (laughs) NASA was founded by Nazis. (laughs) Exactly. So, but that's what he claims. And then, you know, a lot of people uh, say they saw the moon landing but you didn't, you know, you saw a simulation. And if you look up the clip on CBS news from the day they landed on the moon, it says CBS simulation because there's no one on the moon. Yeah. No who's, who's the cameraman to, to film it. So even Buzz Aldrin would get mad at Conan O'Brien when Conan said to him, Oh, I saw you on the moon. He's like, you didn't, you saw, he literally says like, you see, you saw a simulation cause there was no one on the lunar yeah. surface. Anything's possible. I don't know yeah. what they're hiding. I think after COVID, sorry, after no, COVID, no they, they, they killed. It's an interesting rabbit hole. The experts, after COVID were like the first fatality. Yeah. And once well you said. see the experts die in terms Boom. of what they, we think of an expert, you go back and be like, well, I'm going to question everything now. 100%. You don't want to get too, I mean, you should always, but like we were saying earlier, like you got to kind of like keep your skepticism in check. Experts are the easiest to buy. Like they're the first person you buy. Right. I mean, that's why they're filled with Marxists. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> if you start by buying the university that made them an expert Yes. and all of the most important industries like finance, health, et cetera, agriculture like those are the industries where the, the universities are the most captured right so that way they're churning out experts that are already spitting the pharma line right the big banking line which like, is why maybe it's possible that they're all interpreting the new the information wrong you know because you know. like you know throughout history 
people, science, everything's always changing. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm not sold on anything I can't personally, personally see. But also there's things I've seen and we're all bad witnesses to things. It's also about what you didn't see though. Cause yeah. uh, you know, I was watching ancient aliens, which we all know is such a scientific source. Yeah. Maybe but, more so than most. But they pointed <laughs> out, one of the guys on there pointed out, is like, look at the interviews that the astronauts had immediately coming back to earth. And they look devastated, not tired, <laughs> not like they look depressed, what did they devastated. See? They look scarred for life. Yeah, like soul and, they broken. Said, and then there's also like a r- documented two minute <clears throat> gap in transmission mm-hmm. while they were on the moon. So it's like, what happened? Was there, a, you know, did they, was there a secret mission mm-hmm. that the public mm-hmm. isn't aware about when they went up there? Yep. What did they see? <clears throat> right. Uh, there's reports that they heard weird like sounds and like music. It, mm-hmm. it, you know, so it's like, I don't know about flat Earth. I do think we went to the moon, but I also think there's so much. I guess you gotta yeah, you gotta believe in the us. moon. I mean, you know? I think we're like over eighty percent certainty that aliens exist in some form at this right. point. Like yeah. government disclosure on them at some in some right. way. And if that's if that's true, then anything to do with the moon probably involves an alien aspect as well. Yeah, like, I love the theory that it's a so. it's just a, a mothership. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's a wild one. Uh, it could be a Nazi base. As the well, physics you know? <laughs> of it rotating in exactly a way where for every yeah. rotation for all of history, like that is if like a basic understanding of physics, and then coming to the conclusion that you have have two different rotating spheres in space that will happen to rotate in a way that the moon will always forever have a dark side right yep that blows my brains out and that is the one part that to me is like the fact that we have solar eclipses the moon is the perfect size and perfect distance from the sun Mm -hmm. that solar eclipses are possible if it was any closer any further it wouldn't just be a dot on the flip side i will say when you say it like that and i agree because there's so much beauty and like uh, like absurd beauty in the world you know like I think about that with with women giving birth or the way the the seasons happen. Like everything is so insanely intricate and beautiful that that is possible, right? It is possible that there's just a a rock that does that, you know? Waterfalls and and sunsets. I'm about to sound like like Uh, an ICP song. Shut up, you Uh, fucking hippie. (laughs) (laughs) This is why I like the Laurel Canyon, guys. That's a damn good point. (laughs) Have you guys seen a rainbow? (laughs) Um, Well, you mentioned motherships, and it reminded me to bring up this story. Um, If you guys want to listen to this, you will need your headphones. But the uh, Maui wildfires, were they, you know, were they actually wildfires? The crazy uh don't get me started on laser. The crazy part with this clip is that the police chief in Maui is the same guy that was the police chief yeah. during the Las Vegas the tragic Las right. Vegas shooting. It's like when the nurse is the same person in all the Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, we have a short well it's a two minute clip here. So it's just a coincidence that the police chief was the same man in charge of the Las Vegas shooting. And it's just a huge coincidence that property owned by millionaires and billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Oprah, and the founder of PayPal remained untouched while the land of the natives burned only a few feet away, literally. And it's just a huge coincidence that the island had the largest system of outdoor sirens in the world, yet they decided not to sound them or alert anybody in any way. And it's just a huge coincidence that they (laughs) closed all of the schools, sent all of the children home, and turned off the water as soon as the fires started so that people couldn't put them out. And it's just a coincidence that under orders, policemen blockaded the exits, didn't allow anyone to evacuate, and forced them to jump in the water to save their own lives. And it's just a coincidence that the island is set to be the very first to operate on 100% renewable energy. Mm. And to do so, they must significantly decrease their CO2 emissions. And it's just a huge (laughs) coincidence that one month prior to the fires, the mayor issued a press release highlighting his commitment to the United Nations 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. And it's just a coincidence that Hawaii is the only state to have submitted a voluntary local review, which is a framework and goal set to achieve sustainable development. And it's just a huge coincidence that BlackRock and the United States government are two out of the three largest landowners on the island who have been trying to buy up the land from the natives for the past few decades, who refuse to sell, and both of them are part of the renewable energy agenda. And it's just a huge coincidence that the survivors' homes that are still standing are now being evicted. And it's just a coincidence that the fact checkers saying that all of this is a coincidence are owned by BlackRock. At this point, if you believe that all of these are coincidences, you are the crazy one, not me. <laughs> That's our girl, Google Morgan. Google is not going to come out and tell you what's going on. And even if they did, 
A lot of you wouldn't even believe it unless it was from a government or fact-checking website. Yeah. But guess what? They're not going to tattle on themselves, so you need to think for yourself. We should be absolutely enraged about these fires. We really need to stand up and do something because things like this are just going to keep. So I got a few questions. One, I know you said you uh, are familiar with Morgan's content. So I yeah, want you to I also covered the Maui fires a fair bit. Um, the question I always have is if you look, if you know where Hawaii is on a map, it's the middle of the ocean. It's nothing around there. And mm -hmm. we know it's created by volcanoes. So how did people get there in the first place? This is a genuine question. Right. I don't know. And it used to be the kingdom of Hawaii. Right, they have a huge native population. Do you want to talk about Lemuria theories? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you go, yes. go ahead, man. I'll let you. Go. I'm not going to go deep on it, but there are theories of ancient continents that sunk because, and I, I think Hawaii is involved in that one. I might be getting my oceans wrong. Um, there's multiple theories, multiple oceans, but um, there are places where you can find Lemuria is an is a theory of an ancient continent that's named after a lemur because they found a lemur that existed on these like three different islands fucking nowhere near mm, each other and that genetics di like that was only explainable if they had been joined as a continent at one right. point and legends of great floods exist in all ancient cultures and yep. it's like too many coincidences like that that are very scientific uh -huh. and also very traceable and datable sort of explain how P easter island is another part okay. of that that yep. same grouping of continents or of islands um but that's a total tangent as for Hawaii, um, yeah, motherships was it the alien motherships from the moon. It could be, yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe they still have their bases down there under the ocean. That's why they keep on launching out of the ocean and stuff. Or like how yeah. you see in the Antarctica, they have the little caves that are yeah. like perfect. You have yeah. like disc shaped. Antarctica conspiracies are cool. Oh man. Um, I yeah. do want to say briefly about there's one part of that about the Maui conspiracies that that gives debunkers or fact checkers or or like skeptics an in, and it's that uh, Oprah, the, the famous people's properties were not right next to the fire. They're like way over on the other mm -hmm. side of the island. They're like the famous people own property all around the island right. and the fires were contained to just Lahaina which is like just the best this part of the village. island right. older little village really beautiful space really valuable land right now right. as opposed to when they the, they historically have always owned it mm -hmm. um, but other than that yeah she's totally on point there's all these suspicious circumstances and to this day it still is like they are being held up by the banks or something and none of them can rebuild and they're not being yep. let back on and they're having to pay their property taxes yep. on burnt out lots. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I, I mean, I don't want to rant too much, no, but we're right. sending what, how many billions of dollars across the country, mm -hmm. across the seas to other wars and yep. like our own people. Did, yep. did Biden ever visit Lahaina? I think uh, like a month or two later, briefly had go. some mumbles. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, but like our own citizens, just, be just homeless. Just, it's just like, oh yeah, that's great. But East Palestine, like we had yeah. a, a whole town devastated by a freight the bridge. Yep. Yeah. The bridge, like, dude, we have to focus on this country. Oh, do you want some tea on the bridge? <laughs> yes. I got I'm a tea Maryland on the native, bridge. So yeah, <laughs> yeah you're it. here. I would love it. So have you heard the reason that no one's talking about, I mean, like the first thing was like, is it a cyber attack? Is it not a cyber attack? Right. But you know how some uh, workers fell into the ocean? Oh, dude, that, that really upset me. It, I mean, that's a tragedy. This and happened and after? No, no, during it. So there was like okay, construction workers that. on right. the bridge that fell in. Oh, and the, the tea is that they were illegal immigrants that were working on a, on a government project. Like they oh, were great. construction workers working on a federal government the, project. The official narrative I've heard is uh, they could have been illegal immigrants. I don't know about that, but I know they're, they're filling potholes or something. But what pissed me off is that the cops stopped traffic on both sides of the bridge. Yet no one, no one went up to the construction workers and said, hey, there's a giant freight ship coming right for the bridge wow. they, they were able to stop the traffic and save dozens of lives i mean it's possible but they were they way out on the bridge or something well, I'm like, like i'm like did the foreman ignore the calls the warning calls like but anyway be. that really upset me yeah. because they're the only people that died it was the construction yep. workers it was what? the blue collar workers is it dumb exactly. to think like why wouldn't they have run for safety if the barge is there maybe they don't say, I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it was it was dark. Slow, they had ninety seconds, and maybe they were like, "It's just going to pass under the bridge like any other barge." Right? I heard. Yeah, you wouldn't really think there that kind of thing's going to yeah. happen. Ninety second warning, and that was enough time for police officers to get there and stop traffic on both sides. So you would think there's enough time for them to get into their work trucks and haul ass. I think the ninety second warning gets conflated. I'm not I'm not certain, but I think it's conflated because the barge's power went down and back on several times leading up and a bunch of sped up videos got circulated. Right. So so a lot of people were misquoting the time between when the first power outage happened and the hit happened as being ninety seconds or whatever. Yep. And that was like actually like forty five minutes or something. Right. That was like a huge amount of travel between when yep. maybe the first uh 
cyber attack potentially happen yep. and then the generators come on then it goes back down because the theory and laura logan if anyone wants to go deeper yeah. on this laura logan did amazing reporting on this she's a very high quality journalist that has deep sources uh one sec we do have a 20 dollars bring it bring it says it's just a coincidence that a new movie fly me to the moon is coming out this year telling the apollo 11 story of hiring a marketing specialist brought in to fix nasa's public image and stage a backup fake moon landing yeah. i did see that and his name was hitler uh, yeah laura logan's piece was really good about that and everyone should watch laura logan's piece about the bridge yeah. um not saying that she's necessarily right but she's got good sources cool. and really good analysis of like the terror aspects of taking that bridge out and why it's valuable mm -hmm. and just just and how like cyber attacks work and how you would know if it was a cyber attack but what I'm saying is that because there, this is just allegedly, I'm not saying I'm necessarily real. It's just from a, a friend who knows a lot of people said that they're, they were illegal immigrants working on a federal project. And so you can't admit that because right. especially right now during the election, that's a huge, like illegal immigration is a right. huge yeah. issue. And suddenly they're doing a construction project and they're dead. And it's of like, course. that's a, what a mess. mess. <laughs> what a mess. mess. Yeah. And just like the saddest part is that like their families, like they're, these people died yeah. for no, like for who knows what reason. Right. And we can't even like, properly I mean, talk what about you're it. saying about the 90 seconds thing you know that the, the lapse in time that's what away i, I could be yeah. well, right but even still like just a perception of that is a good reminder for people to not get too emotionally attached to news as it immediately yeah. breaks because then people latch on to that as being the truth but it's like we should all know by now the truth takes a little so while true. to unspool especially with these crazy situations and right? right now like twitter is really the source of news for everyone because oh, it's yeah. the only sort like instagram and and TikTok are obviously just short form platforms they're yeah. not actually news platforms and mainstream news is too slow and so everyone knows right now that twitter is where news is yep, happening right. yep. and so everyone's getting their news from twitter and as a twitter creator i think that we all know that like on twitter you don't have to play that game but a lot of people fall into that game of like hit the breaking news right away breaking like news. as quick as you Science. can hit that fucking post because yeah. you get paid for those right. views the more views you get like yep. that's and it so it's like nuts. dangerous you just have to always be careful when you're reading new twitter twitter news it's yep. like give it a day let it simmer yep well i want to give us um before we jump into even more of kind of what we're talking about i want to give us a little bit of a uh oh black pill and a white pill so first we've got the cringe of the day here yeah <laughs> and uh you were looking at it earlier i wanted it to be a surprise but right here we have uh, fried chicken cookies. Um, would you guys eat that? Probably. There's no, there's no sound for this. Probably. No. Probably. Fried chicken cookies? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I would I would try most things once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because, you know. It, I, it could just be this I like to travel. I like to experiment. Recipe try things. But. Whoever posted this video, but I mean, she's like pouring honey I on mean, it. Her nails are making it disgusting for me. Like, I don't yeah. know why those nails are really just, <laughs> just disgusting. Saying. Like, that photo, that the the angle of the chicken looks raw. I mean,. Turn it into turn it into fried chicken on a waffle, though. And as I was saying, I will f that up. I will. That's like a cousin to this. Like yeah. it's not that far off. So if it's you can true. accept the waffle, the cookie, the chicken cookie can't be that bad. It's we can true. do them here. We got Chicken City. I've seen much cringier things. And I think now, is where I'm um, getting at. The white pill is uh, from the Baltimore Orioles, and uh, you know usually the cue of the day is uh, fans, pets. Now mm -hmm. I know Brett's really in tune with that. Unfortunately, I'm not. So I found this clip from the Baltimore Orioles, and they had a uh, they had a puppy in the booth oh. calling the game. With us in the booth, I'm Kevin. This is Analu. It's a damn cute. Ben puppy. has a dog. He'll bring in soon. I hope the Look, dog if you're thinking about talks. adopting a puppy, this is proof that you can, in fact, own a dog and still do your job. We're gonna do a regular <laughs> baseball open. We're gonna talk about home runs. Is that good, Analu? Can we talk about home runs? Let's talk. About one of them with right, us in the so. booth. I'm Kevin. This is Analu. I mean, anything ben to get the viewership at this point. Like, who's watching Major League Baseball now? Dude, like, I feel like dogs the stadiums now. have been empty. Yeah, dude. Know, I saw some videos. Yeah. I mean, it gets into the fucking Taylor Swift conspiracy theories about getting the viewership up because, like, NFL's right. viewership was tanking. Like, they were doing all sorts of things right. that nobody wanted. Or is there just less people than it could we be? Think there are. <laughs> I don't know. Has everyone been dying for some I reason? I mean, lately? yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I have I have friends Talked who by aliens. I have, yeah, there's that too. I have friends who would consider themselves more left leaning, and uh, they don't like a lot of things I talk about, which is fine. <laughs> but um, yep. but <laughs> Woo! every time, man, that's what's this? Crazy. Crazy. So this is a uh, it's a crisis party. Every time we get a hundred dollars in super chats, this is gonna trigger. I love the gun. At right the on, end. guys. Thanks, homies. Oh, dude, with the Alec Baldwin stuff, <laughs> it was happening. They did one with like four gunshots <laughs> in the music. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, oh, I was going to say, yeah. my friend, so these friends, like, they travel and they're weirded out that they go to the, these cities. I forget which one he was in Florida recently. It wasn't Miami, it was another city, maybe Tampa. 
And he's like, it's completely empty. And it's like on yeah. weekends. And pe- he's like the people in these areas. And like, I don't know. I just think it's interesting yeah. <laughs> that there's a lot less people. <laughs> It just seems like there's a lot less people. I don't know why. It's not like everyone was forced to do anything it's, against their will. It's probably a blend of people, you know, addicted to their phones, staying in. Could, Could be. be that. It's people that, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's less people. I think. I think they're people. all. Just, yeah, we're on YouTube, so I'm not going to talk about. What I think there's less yeah. people. I won't say why I'm I think there's less that. people. I just hope the guy. I'm going to say that I'm not one of them, so I'm doing good. Right. Right. I'm we're healthy. Here. I'm happy. We're good. And I have no reason to suddenly have heart problems <laughs> um, all right well then uh, I think we covered all like kind of the the rapid fire stories of the day um, are you guys ready to jump into the real like meat and potatoes yeah which oh, one do you yeah. want to start on um, so let's start with uh, this one's a little bit more brief so we're gonna start with this story from uh, let's see what the source is from the Hollywood reporter so this is Maim Balik if I'm saying her name correctly she was a uh, guest host on Jeopardy. She was a star of the Big Bang Theory. Now she's saying that the um, quiet on set abuse from Nickelodeon, she says it goes so much deeper than that, which is kind of like an obvious statement to say, right? But it, she was on a recent podcast and she's saying how in every writer's room that she's been in, it's been weird. It's been a little bit off-putting. Mm-hmm. They berate women. And, you know, like we talked about Harvey Weinstein earlier, mm-hmm. right? And I'm, not that they're connected, but I, I mean, isn't this just par for the course? When it comes to Hollywood, isn't it just this like cutthroat kind of like, uh, you know, industry that attracts like it or brings out either attracts the worst people or brings out the worst in people? Well, you don't have to look any further than like the fact that people like, for example, just Harvey Weinstein, Steven Spielberg, like go on and on and on with the types of like really sick, nasty people yep. that are the bedrock of the industry that founded the, what we mo- to know today as that industry. And so it's not like it's going to change overnight in a generation when those are the people that are the last generation. Yeah. And and that's, we're not even talking yet about the drugs that are on set, which only makes this behavior worse. And then like the sort of like institutionalized sexual abuse of women and children yep. in these situations, like they, of course it's not going to change if we're not all forcing it to change. Right. Uh, Daniel J uh, with the super chat says, if donut operator and Brandon Herrera had a baby, it would be dope mustache guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks homie. Sick. Thanks homie. It's a good nickname. Uh, they prey on the innocence of these children. Yeah. Right. Like I was somewhere, but I guess that what she's saying is not, it's not just children. No, she's it's saying everyone. everyone's getting, right. getting the short end of the stick. Right. What was quiet on set? Was that the one about the, the Nickelodeon? The Nickelodeon one, yep. yeah. Okay. About like Amanda Bynes, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it was a bunch a of people. Of it was right. mainly it's centered around just evil Dan Schneider and like the yeah. feet, feet, like, okay. But what she's talking about is just specifically the baked in like just male toxicity. dominated, like women are basically assets for us to use mindset which is like obviously tragic and disgusting but it's also like obviously gonna be par for the course when those are the people that have set up and perpetrate this industry right like no one's gonna force them to change yep yeah they have to have the most money and power in the world like they have the power over who gets hired and fired in these sets i mean a lot of like the the quiet on the set thing brought up a lot of conversation in, in the open from people that have experienced the casting couch phenomenon where like sexual favors How to get you your really job, job is yeah. rampant throughout the industry it's and it's just accepted and it's not like like there's no industry where casting couch can be the norm and then women are treated with any respect and dignity right. at all right. can't happen that's yeah. not not the world it just starts from a place of degeneracy yeah it's terrible and uh, it's rampant I, yeah. I, I was, th- you know, I, I, it wasn't me that came up with this, but someone was saying Epstein took care of politics, Diddy took care of the music industry, and then Weinstein took care of Hollywood. I think it, they it wanted go, I mean, to so be only that. We mentioned it this morning. It's like yeah. those are who we know. They're they're the ones who are bad at what they yeah. do. They're bad at being degenerates <laughs> right. and total scum scumbags. Yep. Like, you know, is this just what it is? Has it always been like this? I think. For a very long time yeah ever been. since these industries have been as we know them yeah yeah i mean there's even old stories of of prostitutes and the and the vatican yeah you know, like th- this is just what happens uh, it's unfortunately part of human nature and they find a way to prey upon your desires your fetishes the things you don't want people to know about like we were saying earlier on culture war they got hoover you know they got yeah. the guy who yeah. ran the fbi 50 years right he ran fbi for 50 years and he was a cross-dressing supposedly gay man 
and uh, the mafia had photos mm. of that. That reminds me, like the mafia, like I guess it is just the federal government, right? They just you know evolved into their final form, yeah, right? Because uh, I had a note here from this morning show when I was saying like to win World War II, I forget who I think it was FDR exclusively worked with the mob mm -hmm. and the mafia. I can't yeah. remember. He gave them control capacity. over our ports. That's what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. He gave yeah. them control over our ports. They started smuggling in drugs and that was just because they couldn't. And it was the Sicilian mob. So yeah. it's like to help fight the front in Italy. Yeah. And so it's like, so we befriended them. Mm -hmm. Then they took control over us yep. and they just magically disappeared. It, I'm not buying it. And Ray, it. Rudy Giuliani's not that good at right. solving crime. You know, yeah, right. It, it happens all the time. We, we teamed up with Stalin. And then we had the Red Scare. <laughs> and now, and, and I, in my opinion, we absorbed Marxists mostly into the universities. If you look at the Weather Underground, which are domestic terrorists, yep. they bombed people. They were legit terrorists from this country yep. uh, who were calling themselves Marxists and then went to jail. They were all pardoned by people like Bill Clinton or Andrew Cuomo. And uh, same with the Nazis. We fought a war against them, and then we hired a whole bunch of them. You know, same with uh, Japan during World War II. They were doing some of the most heinous crimes on individuals in terms of experiments, making, yeah. like cutting them open, making them eat themselves, oh. shattering their hands after freezing them. I mean, and that's mm. that's not even talking about the rape of Nan King, which is yeah. insane. So like, it's almost like you always become the thing that you should be hating or you think you should hate, right? Like you you hate the Nazis and then you help so that, hire them. I guess that was my question is initially, is, is it, is Hollywood in this kind of realm just inherently evil or does it bring out the evil in people? It's absolute it, power, is, You right? know, because like they say, you know, I think it's pride is one of the deadly sins. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to be prideful to be a famous star, yeah. to be an entertainer. Yep. So it's like, does that just kind of trigger something in people? They, they, the most successful people are the most evil. And maybe not in all, but like I think there's a certain type of people in all of these institutions that do crave power and are willing to sacrifice their morals to get there. I think that the Epstein's of this world would love for us to use that as the explanation for it and, and let them all off the hook for being mm. the ones that perpetrate this industry. Because mm. yes, power does attract the corruptible, but if the corrupt are in charge of the power, then the corruptible will come and become corrupted. But if there were good people in charge of the movie, like there's no reason why shitty people have to be in charge of making movies. Right. Like I can make a movie, That's you true. can make movies, right. Right. like anyone can make a fucking movie. Yep. It's like, and so there's no reason why the movie industry has to be full of corrupt people other than the fact that the media for, for a long, long time, everyone of power has known that the most important tool of power is media yeah. like control of the mass mindset about the world yeah. and so it will always be targeted by the most powerful people which will inevitably be the people that are selling drugs and sex and weapons do you think it was yeah. visual media we said on monday that you know video killed the radio star right which is, I think it's very true, mm -hmm. you know? Radio is massively controlled. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Do, do you think this kind of abuse happened behind, you know, oh, it's, it's even harder question. to expose when there's not a camera anywhere around. All you have is a microphone. I mean, I kind of doubt it. Like, may, yeah, like as in, yeah, maybe there was, there was obviously control over those, but, but in a radio program, like you hardly need to control anything because there's just so many fewer parts and there's yeah. so many fewer stations and all you need to really control is the host and the writers, right? That's true. And like maybe, maybe some of the easier. callers, it's like so easy. Yeah. You can, I mean like the CIA is famous for just popping up radio stations all over That's the right. place. Like during the cold war, they were just making like freedom radio stations next to Russia and That's just right. broadcasting into Russia. Yeah. Um, and they did that to chat, like they've done that all over the world. It's like very easy to do. And so I think that before video, you just didn't need this huge apparatus. Yeah. But once the moment of it's, it's video, it's like you need a human to fully act into these parts. Right. Which is where we get AI now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Is it just more jarring? Or, I mean, is it actually like, do you think it's actually taking more uh, power from the, you know, the evil people that be? Or is it just like more jarring for us, kind of like on the outside? Visual media, you mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, because like, for example, I think it was Orson Welles, right? He had the, the radio the program. Um, and, yeah, War of the Worlds. And he had a radio program and he scared the absolute mm -hmm. hell out of people. Dude. I have it on record. He would like, there was, a, there was like an alien invasion yep. episode and people were terrified. Yep. And it was like 30, 1938 or something. like I can't remember yeah, the date. Maybe a little later than that, but yeah. So absolutely good. terrified the American yeah. public yep. and it was all fiction yep. and so it, 
It just shows shows you how easily people can be manipulated by the I sources guess it's they think new. they can trust. Yeah. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. This is all cyclical. We've just inherited this this world, and now we're at the age where we are discussing it. You know, as like the adults, dare I say? <laughs> but yeah. that's the case. You know, and our our family probably went through similar things. I saw I I had a really good relationship with my grandparents, and they grew up. They were raising a family throughout the '60s when it was just assassinations and wars. Their parents fled Russia when their neighbors were getting hacked to pieces. Mm. You know, like it was just constant absurdity, and violence, and uh, manipulation of news. And like they've been doing this in World War Two, World War One. Everything's manipulated, down to like the weather. You know, like I was just thinking about uh, Operation Popeye and Vietnam. What's up? What's that one? That's where they were seeding the clouds to cause monsoons yep. to make mudslides to get the Viet Cong out of their tunnels. And if anyone thinks he's lying, you can just look up how the United Arab Emirates just complained about how they messed up their own cloud seeding last week and they flooded oh, the UAE yep. because they cloud seeded too much. Am, am yep. I the weird Mainstream one? Mainstream kind of like I'm kind of amazed that they were able to do that in a desert. It's insane. Like if dude. they can find a they way to spend like a lot reel, of money on if it, they can yeah. reel that in though and kind of fine tune it. Terrifying. Yep. I mean, no. Arizona is not going to worry about water anymore. Yeah, I don't think we should be messing around with this guy like I, that. I'm not saying we should or shouldn't be, but yeah. uh, you know it is very tragic because I yeah I'm sure people lost their lives in Dubai and and the UAE, but I I mean do you think it's playing God? Yeah, I think it, it's the same way I think about Neuralink and stuff. There's there's obviously amazing benefits to all of these things, and it, and like but like I said earlier, at a certain point you progress yourself out of existence, and uh, yep. the cloud seeding I just don't think will work out. It's kind of like okay here's another example of someone who fought evil and became evil and then did things to the environment because he was seduced by his own evil I, urges i guess the difference is though with operation here i'll pull it up for you guys um i guess operation popeye uh was a military cloud seeding project carried out by the u.s air force during the vietnam war the highly classified program attempted to extend the monsoon season over specific areas of the ho chi minh trail yep. in order to disrupt the north Mi vietnamese military supplies by softening road surfaces and causing landslides so i'm wondering this was this came from a place of evil they were maybe not evil but uh, they wanted to inflict pain they wanted to destroy where the UAE was nowadays war. they I mean, wanted I mean I don't think they're trying to inflict destruction I think they're trying on to the, in the UAE oh no they're yeah. just rich and they just want rain yeah, yeah they're, they're just like it's a desert I'm mean, rich as hell like make think, it rain baby I think there's just uh, what does Thomas Sowell say there's no solutions only trade-offs yeah right so Smart that's man. Uh, one of the best and yeah. like this is that for me but I was gonna say uh, Chairman Mao, bad dude. <laughs> bad he, dude. He he the fought. The printer knows. Really bad. Yeah. He he fought the Japanese right when the Japanese were doing the rape of Nanking. Mm -hmm. He saw absolute evil. Right. He went home and was like, I got to protect my people. What did he do? He became evil. Right. Because he's like, maybe it's maybe it's proximity to evil and fighting evil that makes What's you the then become evil. Staring into the abyss. I can't remember. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. You, then you become the abyss. Uh, Gordon Shumway says it's always been like this. Uh, look at Judy Garland and the stuff they yes. did to her. Great point. Throughout. It was her. Uh, it was her whole life. Yep. Abortions Some and sick pills. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what he's saying there, but and that's what we know about. Imagine what we don't know about. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, I, I can't remember the quote, but it's like it, it, if you fight monsters long enough. You're at risk of becoming the monster yourself yeah. if you and if you stare into the abyss, it'll stare right back into you. Yeah, it's it's the human nature, right? It's like the story we see in everything. It's it's Darth Vader, you know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's everywhere. Well, and you I have mean, to know that if it's Darth Vader, that means people can be saved. Ooh, nice. I believe in redemption for yep. sure, but there's also real monsters out there. I think trying to do real evil to sustain power and fulfill and fill up their bank accounts and stuff. You know, I, I'm not saying the uh, United Emirates are evil, but I'm saying them seeding their clouds has evil um, outcomes that they didn't intend for probably. But when you play God, oh, this is where I was going with the, with Mao. Mao adopted this evil, you know, Marxism on steroids and was like, we have to destroy capitalism. So we're going to kill all the sparrows because sparrows mm. remind me of capitalists. So everyone killed sparrows. What was the weird consequence of that? The bugs ate all the crops that the sparrows would have typically eaten. <laughs> and that caused a famine where millions and millions of people died, yep. right? So it's like all these weird things. It's like why I don't like the Green New Deal. It's why I don't like the Neuralink. It, these things sound really nice, but at the end of the day, 
into the future, you're destroying your children, your grandchildren's, you know, hopefully a future. It's a really good point. Sparrows sounded harmless. Dude, they had kids like bashing yeah. them over that. Like, it was a fun eat. thing. They lit they slaughtered. It was a sparrow holocaust. Yeah. Which is the name of my new punk band. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure you'll get canceled for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well sick. then let's go to super chats. Um, and before we jump into the next uh, bit topic, uh, Shane H. Wilder says, Good luck and Godspeed, Kellen and Cashman. Woo. Don't F it up. Remember, Mr. Fluffykins is always watching and will report back to Mary. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know that giant creepy teddy bear on top of the TV, I'm pretty sure that's Mr. Fluffy. That's one of them. Yeah. She's got like 30 of them. There's, someone, there's, there's a few over there. <laughs> there's someone in each of those stuffed animals. Um, DC and DC says, Brett and Mary suck, man. Who needs those guys? Hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Brett Dasovic says, good luck, everyone. Have fun. Don't break anything. <laughs> um, Corey Anderson says, I miss Mary and Brett. LOL. We do, too. We miss them, too. <laughs> Corey Anderson also says, don't do anything weird in the studio or Mary won't come back without holy water. <laughs> uh, we'll get one last one in here. Oper uh, Drew, Operation Outstanding in the Field, says, Shane, who profits most from... From fa oh, this is a good one to end on. Who profits the most from fake clouds? Will there be a conversation <laughs> about clouds at the Austin Mines event? I'm willing to bring it up. Uh, yeah, I was trying really hard to not get into the fake clouds. I'm like, I, mean, I don't want to talk about cloud seeding. But I'm going to. Yeah, I believe clouds are fake. There's vintage clouds. Those are made by God. But there's fake clouds. Heard that, that been, obviously that they've added since. They're, they're, they've added with forever chemicals being evaporated into the sky or, or clouds that are formed. Just from microplastic Fukushima fumes. atom bombs chemtrails there's a whole hierarchy of fake clouds that we can get to well i guess but, yeah uae those were all fake clouds right yeah those were technically all thank fake you clouds. Or thank you fake, you know enhanced right enhanced i said clouds. i've been saying fake clouds for like a year and people were laughing i think they thought, thought i was joking but i'm like no i'm being dead serious like i believe it's caught on well, i mean what even is if i mean like a cloud is just water vapor condensing around some form of particulate matter in the air right, right. and so there's natural particulate matter that was supposed to be there right there's a lot of other particulate but matter up there nowadays we know there's forever chemicals in the water supplies yeah. from the microplastics mm -hmm. so yep. We also know that they evaporate up in the sky. Well, that's true. Like a lot of these water filtration plants just have giant pools. Like they're not covered. There's giant pools of water before right, yeah. it gets processed. So right. that's, that evaporates. Yeah. And There's a story breaking right now about recycling that's broke on CBS. Mm. There's a big, big scandal going on where they're starting to break how uh, all of recycling might be a lie perpetrated by the plastic can industry. Mm -hmm. And actually, plastics are not recyclable, never really were like 1% of plastic getting yeah. recycled. Yeah. So they're I just burning them and, and microplastics are just I, going I into the air. I've tried people and, that, but oh, you're a conspiracy I, I theorist. Agree. I it was agree. on CBS today. There's islands of plastics in the ocean. Yep. Like, oh, the, what are, the, the what are we doing? The Great Pacific Garbage right. Patch. That's yeah. going to be like, that's next to Hawaii. I mean, who's yeah. more incentivized to tell us that recycling works than the plastic industry? Right. Exactly, dude. Dow Chemical. Dow uh, DuPont. Are you, are you guys familiar with the light bulb conspiracy? No, what's that? So this is, this is another like actual conspiracy that happened. I think it was in the early 1900s. So there's this light bulb in a firehouse, I think San Francisco, somewhere in California. It's never gone out. It's like over 100 years old. It's never burned out. Well, these light bulb manufacturers, when electricity was invented, realized that this product is too good. People buy it once <laughs> and they never need to buy it again. And you can look, I can't remember if there's like an actual name for this convention, but the world's light bulb manufacturers actually convened overseas, I think in Europe or something. Wow. And that's where planned obsolescence comes from. That's why your iPhone breaks and slows down yep. after a year or two. That's right. why you have a John Deere tractor and you're not allowed to get it fixed except by a John Deere technician. Right. Yep. Right. It all started with light bulbs. I, I think they look at humans the same way. That's why they can't cure. They won't cure cancer. It's like yeah. I'm sure they have cures for things, but they like us being addicted to. Well, pills. You, there's no money in that. Exactly. Not there's at all. No, you can't. Exactly. Dude, how are you supposed to? In make fact, they prefer healthy? to make um, diseases out of perfectly natural human human things. Like menopause is now being oh, yeah, turned into a disease that yep. we have to fix. Yep. Um, okay. Cool. There's half the population that has to take this like. I don't know, hormonal sort of treatment for menopause because you can't have a natural life. It's unbelievable, like, dude. It's, yeah. the, the, the attack is happening at every possible front of our existence. Well, this kind of touches based on what I was saying earlier about like the evil, has it always existed? Like, or has the veil just been lifted? Like, same question. You know, Both. has it's this always, always been happening to yeah, us? Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. accelerating because yeah. this process, the, sp the pace of everything's accelerating, right. right? There's more money, there's more there's more connectivity, there's more time, there's more speed. Yep. And it's just like, man, I mean, if you just look at health and big pharma, it's like just the number of things they're like trying to make money on has just increased in 
I totally agree. It's always been here. Increased. And we've also, like, as a global nation, I'm not saying this as a global person who likes globalism. I'm saying collectively, we've all experienced a great scar with COVID. Yeah, as humanity. We confronted, like, a, a new evil. The world shut down, right? right? And so that thinned the veil for a lot of people in terms of the experts, yeah. that way we see experts and stuff. So, yeah, that probably does it too. Just like how people probably felt about World War II when it was yeah. happening, or seeing an atom bomb all of a sudden. You know, we had to confront this new existential crisis. So we're always a, going through those. I had a question uh, that I wrote down actually during the show this morning that I wanted to ask you. When we were talking about interdimensional beings and aliens and how it ties into, which the next story we'll talk about with like Diddy and everything. Uh, do demons know that they're demons? Great question, That's dude. a cool question. I think so. I mean, I, th I think if you're interdimensional, you have to be smart as hell. Yep. And so to them, it's not that they necessarily consider themselves demons, but they know that from human lore, like they would understand our mythos and lore, I would assume. So you, but, but you're under the like assumption that demons are not human then? No, I mean, I would be under I the assumption. I think from my perspective, the most likely version of those theories is that either humans from the dist distant future have trans-temporal capability or humans from the distant past, like maybe a lost ancient civilization, mm -hmm. either continue to live on under the ocean, under Antarctica, in space, who knows? Mm -hmm. Some version of humans seems like the most likely version mm -hmm. of that to me. And they're just highly advanced either because of past or future yeah. differences from our culture. I think there's probably different levels of human of, of humans and <laughs> demons, right? Like I, I wrote a story for Scanner for Tim Cast not that long ago called The Demon Hunter, where I went out with this, you know, Alex yeah. Rosen. Yeah. Is he I called The Demon oh, Hunter? Dude, no, saw, but I did the story. I just saw okay. a clip today um, of uh, Kansas City Police. Yes, dude, it's they crazy. They exposed this, this guy. Yep. who's got all this kind of explicit material on his phone involving yep. children. Evil. And the police Gross. don't do a damn. They let him go. Dude, so we, I spent a weekend with him in Ohio, and I remember the first time we confronted one of these people. In my head, I'm like, this is a demon. Yeah. And I don't know if he thought of himself as a demon, right. but he knew enough to try to work his way around logically around what he was doing. Right. Yeah. We caught him. He was going so he was, to go meet was, a young girl. So he had girl. a level of morality. That's disgusting. I wouldn't say it was morality. He had a level of self-awareness to know enough that we knew it was To bad. logically maneuver himself out of having to face morality. Right. right. So what you're describing, what I was describing is like actually aliens, interdimensional right. beings. What you're describing is demon humans. Yeah. Humans that have been so corrupted by evil that they have sacrifice their humanity i'm not even sure yeah it could be that or like they're actually possessed by something yeah, like that's, it, a, like, that's a fair take. or they could be possessed by the things you're talking about right yeah, it's a fair take <laughs> well, that, that, i was gonna say <laughs> are, fair are, take. Are, are the people you're talking about just tools of the interdimensional beings and that could be these, where the hierarchy comes you in. know yeah. these cross-dimensional like whatever you want to call aliens humans from the past whatever name you want to give them maybe like yeah. the most evil like scummy people we can think of today are they just tools being used or are they themselves because that's uh, that's like a I don't think that some of these people that do horrendous things, no mm. matter what we're talking about, mm -hmm. I, I am of the belief that you can't actually like be all there to under like to yeah. do certain things. You have to and dissociate because, in some way. Like, you, have I, to... you know, I'm just like a normal person that I, I can't imagine myself doing those things. Maybe I can't like comprehend it. Right. But I, I, I just I don't know if they know. Yeah. How like evil or demonic they are i think the politicians know they're demons yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and then they're, they're more they're level, okay with it but they're not the highest of the levels and uh the ones i'm talking about i think they just have this evil urge to destroy innocence and they feed off of it yeah. and like i'm looking at them right in their face this one guy shat himself in front of us when we mm -hmm. caught him i mean it, it was she, the like, most like on purpose like was he like sc I, like scared to like a me, dog it seemed like it was the human part of him and the demon part of him having a chemical yeah, reaction. Fully like, dissociating. Dude, it, I mean, we spent two hours with these people, like, yeah. interrogating them. And Alex is really great at his job and the way he, he they have a decoy, who's not a young girl, but she looks very young. And we caught this guy. Mm. He thought he was going to go to her house. She was 11 or 12. That's like, so you know, fucked. and he, he thought she was 12, 11 or 12. She was really a 24. And, like, just, and we had like three or four of these guys in two days. And, Alex? It's so messed up how many of them there are. Bro, they're everywhere. God. They're everywhere. He could work every day, all day. Yeah, can we just briefly talk about how, like, the Epstein of our culture, yeah. the pornification of our culture, the degradation yeah. of young men, of men in general, yeah. of manliness, and just, like, all of those factors working together to create a society where there can be that many men that are willing to be pedophiles? Like, yep. It, it's disgusting. Oh, it's I, so I, gross. I, I, that's another thing is, like, I don't know if that's even a unique thing to today. Like that I is think, a good question. I think yeah. that might be unfortunately something that's always been around. And now it's like they have the internet 
that can accelerate the ability to them to reach the kids because there's a lot of kids who are yeah. uh, unsupervised on the internet. But then on the flip side, in a more positive light, is there's people like Alex who then weaponize the internet against them. But I mean, I would argue that's everywhere. why we invented religion. That's why we invented morality yeah. was to because, and I, I'm speaking kind of just about men here. Women right. can obviously be corrupted and women can obviously be a problem too, but men are like yep. real animals. And men yep. like are, that's the point. Like we yep. are designed in like from, millions of years we're designed to fight and kill and protect and to be like total monsters if you're not on my team right and right. that includes right. all the same urges that turn into but all of the is, evil people yeah. in our world but is violence evil though well I mean, not not if it's protecting your people violence is like right. the, the highest form of of it's honor graphic. if it's protecting it's jarring yours. Yep. You know, but like, I don't think it's inherently. Evil. But when it's unchecked, when it's un, when it's when that those urges are run rampant without morality, without like that is where you get true evil in this world. Yeah. And I honestly think that religion is a natural. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I was not raised religious and yeah. I'm trying to find yeah. my own version Me of religion. Neither. And uh, I think that it's just a process by which humans are allowed to, t especially men, because we're talking about a male God. And I and so men are given away to. Uh, have a conversation with their own inner voice yep. as their oversight to keep them yep. from giving into Dude, these horrible urges. Literally how I came to being religious. Yeah, right? it's After critical. a year, a life of atheism, yep. right? Uh, I needed, I realized that myself as well as the world needed a structure to the chaos mm -hmm. and I needed an anchor in this world of absurdity. Right? Like a personification of your consciousness yes. to keep, because especially like when you're young, you don't realize it, but the older right. a man gets, the more you realize that like you need something to keep yourself from letting yourself slip. Right. Because it's so easy to like, to like be like, well, I didn't get the good job. And it's like, I'm just not cut out for right. it or whatever. I'll just like, right. I'll just drink a little more tonight and not forget about right. it. Whereas when you were younger, you were more idealistic and you were like, no, I've got all this in me. I can do this. Yep. But like, as you get older, you need to hold yourself to account yes. to both what you believe and what you aspire to be you, and to like absolutely. morals. You gotta realize there's like, I'm gonna call them demonic forces. You have, and this is like a real thing that I've done. I'm, I'm, before this job, I was a youth sports coach. It's one of my kind yeah. of, like, we're talking about side hustles. And the school instructed us coaches. I'm not gonna, you know, name the school, but they instructed us coaches. Like you can't tell people to be go-getters. Like they're yeah. teaching children, yeah. you have it bad because X, Y, and Z, either it's a certain group of people that yep. are oppressing you or it's your life circumstances, but there's no upward mobility. You have no power no, over it. It pisses me off, mm -hmm. especially because I was a coach when it's yep. all about triumph and doing something that you're working so hard to be do, you know, to achieve. And they're telling these kids, you can't. You can't. I bring up Obama. Yes, we can. That's a very powerful mm -hmm. message. So if, mm -hmm. you, if you like Obama or don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The, the saying that we can do something. Yeah. If we work hard, right. we can achieve our goal. Right. right. And they're telling children, no matter what you do, yeah. no matter what you do, you cannot, you cannot do that. So it's not just like the absence of religion, which is a It's actually problem. the denigration right. of it. The denigration yeah. they're, they're of our most basically basic fighting against values. it. Yep. Like, yeah. There's no structure. The families are broken. Yep. And on top of this, you're telling you have every adult in your life, especially in the public school system, saying you can't, and that that over there, whether it's a phenomenon or a group mm -hmm. of people, that's the reason why. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do. There's not even saying you need to fight those group of people. They but don't, don't worry, we'll take care of you. You're you're a victim, and we'll take care right. of you. Exactly. But like. You have to pay us a lot of money in taxes so that we can do our thing and like yep. fall in line and just the, go the, to your job. The your dominating thing. modern religion is nihilism. Yeah. yeah, that's what they want. They want you to have it's very well no power over yourself. Thanks, but they they literally I see it all the time with like young kids. I see I, my I have a young son. Mm -hmm. He's about to be eight. He knows you know kids in the neighborhood. These are nine, ten year old kids who are already joking about like suicide yeah. and dark. Like not my son, yeah. uh, but like he's heard it right. Oh we yeah, have to have these how, conversations. How, if you know how old are these kids joking uh they're like nine or ten yeah it's crazy I, I was teaching middle school a couple of years ago i've taught a lot of different ages and middle schoolers are exposed to the craziest i mean it's like, wild. they're all over tiktok they're all over everything i get it For everyone sure. goes through that For sure. edgy, and I, like, I get it middle school and elementary school but now. there's a nonchalant attitude to the way they're joking about it that's uh, it's shocking to me well i mean when it's a real possibility now yeah with, like, yes maids, like it's not just like haha <laughs> you're dark humor like, right it's like it's, you have to take this shit seriously yep. now because Mental health has become a not a stigma anymore, but a badge in a lot of yeah, ways, right? Yeah, amongst like a the scarlet youth, letter it's more the victimhood. Yeah, it's like, man, what a success for big pharma to like oh. to like give <laughs> to give kids their their honor badges yeah. for mental illnesses yeah. that require medications. Yeah. Yeah. Like kids, do you realize how much money big pharma is making off of you and your medications, right. the honor especially badge. the ones that you have to take for the rest of your life? I was uh, listening God, to the defiance, uh, 
during the you know the intermission we had today, I went to get, get some food. I was listening to the Defiant, and it was the "We Make Sick. Drugs" song. Sick. I don't know if you guys are familiar with I that, heard that, but one, it's yeah. uh, "We Make Drugs, We Make Bank, We Get Little Love, We Get Little Thanks." It's about pharma. It's not about your yeah. neighborhood drug uh-huh. dealer. It's about yep. pharma, yep. and uh, it, it's, a, it's it's a catchy song. But it's like it just every time I play it, it just makes me think. And I'm like, wow. Every NFL game, every basketball game mm-hmm. is sponsored by Pfizer. Yeah. Yep. Very cheery, the news. very happy. And yep. The news is sponsored by Pfizer. And have you guys yep. heard about how they're sponsored by Pfizer? Not because anyone will ever buy a product because of a pharma ad. It never happens. And they all, pharma knows it. They all right. know it. It's because they're not legally allowed to tell the news what to say, but they are legally allowed to give them billions of dollars of advertising. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the moment that you give billions of dollars of advertising, you now wink, wink, nudge, can't nudge. be criticized. Yep. 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 We, you know, they're not yeah. going to tell you what to say, but if you don't say a certain thing, you know, there goes the money. Don't talk about the fact they released the whole report on safety for the vaccine and it was uh, all redacted every single page <laughs> every know. single word oh. you know about that yeah yep. dude it's well it's I want insane. to continue this conversation but I'm gonna bring up yeah um, we don't want them to take us off of that's, YouTube that's so the let's, narrative, I wanna, no, the narrative it, builders get their pay yep and they they build the narrative well I want to bring up the the narrative builders and what happens when you stray from it um, we have a TikTok star Kyle Marissa Roth mm. dead at 36 the family announces her passing uh, and you said you you spent like the last twenty four hours really diving into this, and I'll let you kind of hash it all, like lay it all out for us. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I didn't. I don't have a ton of uh, depth on Kyle, and I didn't know her before this story broke. A lot of people on TikTok did. She was killing it for a long time, long before I got into TikTok. But I did get some tea from someone who's way more involved, who knew way more about it today, to kind of fill me in. Um, because my first take was like, oh, that's very sketchy. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Um, but then my second take, which I think a lot of people are probably going through right now, is like, well, yeah, but like, did Diddy really kill a TikToker? Right. And like she was like she was digging into it, but then but here's my third take now that I've learned more, is that Kyle was dealing with colon cancer, which is why she lived on this side of the country, kind of away from her family. And she was she was dealing with it for a long time and um it cost a lot of money, but she was making it happen. And she had been uh taken a lot of shots not just at diddy but at uh j-lo over time here and and since like before this right and j-lo is kind of on a downward spiral right now um in a lot of ways and kyle was totally shitting all over her in big ways and j-lo did a thing i don't know the specifics of it but j-lo went and downloaded a bunch of kyle's content and then like copyright wrote J Lo stuff within Kyle's content and got Kyle's content all copyright stricken and got her account how, banned. How did she do it? I don't know the specifics of how it was done, but it was like so. Kyle had an account that was like almost a million followers, is my understanding yeah, for a long time. Like celebrities and J Lo got it banned because she was she was making content about J Lo, presumably using J Lo's content. And this is me kind of like putting the pieces using together like here. Images and videos. Exactly. And so okay. J Lo went and got that and did all the work behind the scenes to then turn that over to TikTok and say that this account is using my copyrighted material. Ban it. That banned Kyle's main account while she's paying for cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then that's, she's in a bit of trouble. That's demonic. Yeah, but then she has a couple backup accounts that she's able to grow back up really quick and she doubles down really hard. And so she uh, she had recently made a post where she said something about like, if I die from colon cancer right now, this is why, FYI, because I can't afford my meds because of this thing wow. that has just happened. Um, and just to say that like, that's not the kind of person that's gonna end it right. because they're giving up. Right. That's the kind of person that's like on a mission and she's clearly on a mission right. doing her thing. Yep. And so, so, now that I know more about it, now I start to think like, okay, well, we have JLo in a downward spiral. JLo actively taking steps against Kyle's mm. account in general. Yeah. We have Diddy. So Diddy and JLo, who were used to date, right? Yep. JLo was involved in a shooting with Diddy way back in the day that got swept under that. the rug. She, it's not party. like she shot anyone, yeah. but she was at the scene. She like had, had the gun or something like yeah. that. She like was a part of it. She was in the, the, the case. So they got history, and we we know that at least Diddy can call in hits. Yep. Diddy can call in car bombings, at least. Um, he blew up Kid Cudi's car. That's right. Um, really? Just to, yeah, just to warn him to stay yeah. away from his girl. Huh. Don't don't fuck with Diddy's girl yeah. because he will yeah. blow your car. Then up. he made Cudi wear a dress. Yeah, I for real. Like that, but he did wear a dress. Someone well, that, did. That's another phenomenon. <laughs> Someone did. Wanna, yeah. I don't want to like stray too far, but that's another phenomenon that we're seeing with like just rappers humiliation all, rituals all yes. men dude honestly any men entertainer whether you're an athlete mm-hmm. or a musician right now like the met gala perfect example it's all dresses it's all yeah. skirts and we're yeah. not talking kilts like because they've got scottish no, heritage no, no. no we're talking about women's clothes yeah. 
which is fine. Wear what you want to wear, but it's not. It's there's something going on when everyone's doing it all of a sudden. Humiliation rituals are one of the biggest ones to me that that lend real credence and evidence towards more of like a cult theories and vibes Mm -hmm. because it's not just a power play like if you just want to blackmail people for power right you don't need them to wear a dress in public you need to blackmail them by having a video of them sucking someone off right Mm. the whole dresses and like all the weird humiliation rituals and all the like symbolism that they flash and stuff like that those are the kinds of things that get me like really listening to the people that go deep down the occultist rabbit holes left eye yeah the satanist stuff is like what is that uh, was that, would you consider that a cultist? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, a lot of it is symbology that traces back to th- like Illuminati is totally the wrong word, but a lot of it's yeah. like Freemason based okay. symbolism and stuff, yeah. and, or like just straight up Satanism yeah. and uh, um, I'm like Baphomet symbolism, other symbolisms right. that are associated with like paganism. You'll but see it everywhere. It's the uh, it's the. The, oh. This one and the yep. things over the eye. A yep. lot of it is one hand over the yep. eye. A lot of it is triangle symbolism, yep. Um, yep. things like that. Um, if you want to know about that, you search for Return of Cappy on Twitter. And, and oh, yeah. our, my, our homie Return of yep. Cappy goes deep down all of it. Yep. I, that stuff is wild. And uh, yep. I, I, there's, oh, God, what's her name? Death of Freedom. I think on Instagram, she does a lot of like deep dives on the Abramovich stuff. Yeah, the Abramovich um, stuff is wild. Spirit cooking stuff, which is <laughs> yep. a whole other And if you're inclined for more of the journalistic side of it, then you go follow Liz Croken. Because yeah. Liz is yeah, she's the G. Yeah. yeah, Liz has been doing this since before any of us, and she was canceled a million times for yep. it. And she is the real deal journalist about it. Yeah. As for Kyle, it's looking more and more like, at least from my perspective, yep. like actually that could be not an accident. Right. Well, it says here one of her recent uh, clips. So it wasn't just uh, J Lo, it was Jay Z, Beyonce, who you mentioned might be yep. uh, stepping into the new role. Yeah. Uh, Simon Cowell, Ryan Seacrest, to name a few. Mm-hmm. She goes um, after a lot of people. And I, mean, I mean, I, I just like it, it's tragic. I know how like vicious colon cancer can be, but the timing is just it's, it's okay. It's like you, mm-hmm. you have to ask questions. Yeah. Well, here's the deal: if she had died from colon cancer, it's been more than a week. It's been like nine days or the something since she know. died. The family doesn't know, and we have not heard anything about the cause of death or how the death happened. Like. If it's a fake, su- if it's a suicide, like the Boeing whistleblower, mm-hmm. we knew the same yeah. day that he shot himself in the head inside of his truck inside right. of the car park. Yep. And that was, he didn't do like, I mean, obviously he did, obviously like that's the real story. That's the real <laughs> truth. Like, <laughs> duh. But like, but uh, with, with Kyle, it's like really weird that we don't even know any of the details about the death. Cause yeah. if it was colon cancer, like we would probably know, at least have heard that. Something. Yeah. Well, that the family weird. should know. And you said she moved over to this side of the country. She's been living on this side of the country. And I think her, my understanding is that her family's over on the other but side. Her family was aware that she's battling yeah, cancer. Yeah, exactly. And she moved over here specifically because of that treatment, because to be close and to I her, can't imagine her hospital if, or something. If her budget got, you know, destroyed from TikTok. I, you know, I can't imagine like, Families will go in debt themselves to save a loved yeah. one. Yeah. So I doubt a lack of. Medication. And she was killing it. Like yeah. she was. Ki- and so to be clear, like your income on TikTok does not matter how many followers you have. It just matters how many views you have. And right. she was getting tons of views. Yeah. Like she was wow. making thousands of dollars on her wow. new TikTok based upon those views. Like wow. TikTok pays really well. Um, I don't know how much cancer drugs cost for colon cancer, but like. Right. No, but, um, but I mean, you can get an American Express card, yeah. and uh, they'll. I mean, nowadays with how right. screwed up the economy is, they'll give that to anybody. And to be fair, when she so when she was when she was down and broke yeah. because of that, that was months and months and months ago. Right. Like she's been making money okay. now ever since this new account has been growing, and so she's clearly not dying because she can't afford meds right now. And that's where it's like, oh, this is fucking sketchy. That's crazy. Do you, do you believe anything with these? So this ties back into the Maui story we were talking about earlier that she made a, one of her most recent videos before she passed away was about Oprah, that she was going to expose Oprah and the Maui fires. And as a journalist, <laughs> personally, I, I cover a lot of shit you're not supposed to talk about. And I don't fear for my life at all in a serious way, because when I do that, 99% of the time, what I'm doing is I'm regurgitating other people's reporting. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not really like the risk is when you're the one covering something that's not broken yet. When yeah, you have a right. leak, when you have a whistleblower, yep. that's the risk. And yep. was she doing that? Not usually. That's not her usual content. But she, so covering blind items, what a blind item is, and she didn't only cover blind items. She like overused the phrase, but the concept of, do you guys know what a blind no. item is? It's like, it's like a, an old celebrity. I don't know it very well, but I had it explained to me is that it's like blind items get posted online as anonymous tips, so okay. to speak about celebrities. And it can be anything from like, Jay Z is going to be eating at this restaurant today at this time, right. and and even he like they might post it themselves yep. to get paparazzi to a place, oh, yeah. or it might be a leak about like like P Diddy's 
lawsuit is about to right. drop. Like those, it could be anything. And it's a yeah. way for like sources to get to the paparazzi and the media about right. these people. And so she would just read these blind items and usually they're anonymous, usually like they just, and so that is the kind of information space where someone might eventually just start coming directly to her with a yeah. leak. That's wow. me just making presumptions. And that's something the Kardashians do all the yeah. time is like the, re leaking stuff to, so the paparazzi exactly. could, could go see them and, oh, you, I didn't know you were gonna be here. Yeah, but we all knew. I, well, I, you know, I read something today that th they think, cause this, she's not the only TikTok, like you're big on TikTok, she's big on TikTok, I know there's a, a lot of TikTokers that expose uh, celebrities and whatnot. People are saying this might be the real push that that's why they're trying to ban it. In this country, they don't no. care about the data harvesting. They don't care. Oh, not about at all. The impact right. on children. They don't give a shit. Right. They think it's a threat to the status quo. Yeah, they can't yeah. control the the information and it's a foreign, space. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a foreign app, and yep. so they have very little control. If, Actually, if I don't. Just, I think that that's a made up narrative. You remember? You remember Project Texas? I don't know. So during the TikTok hearings that happened last year, okay, right? Um, Project Texas was the solution when they were, cause last year they were like, we need to ban TikTok because right. it's Chinese app. Right. And so what they did is they, they established Project Texas, which moved all of the TikTok data centers to Texas under the oversight of Oracle. Hmm. Did Oracle, that actually happen though? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So all the data centers moved to Texas and are under the oversight of Oracle and Oracle has oversight over the algorithms of TikTok, right. i.e. what gets censored and what doesn't. Oh, and Oracle is, just look up Oracle CIA. Oracle is, like a CIA project from its inception. Larry Ellison found, he was before he founded Oracle, which is like one of the biggest tech companies in the world. It's like the sixth biggest company in the world. Oracle was actually a CIA operation that he worked on called Operation Oracle before Oracle was a company. Mm. And then he, that operation finished and then he founded a totally different company that has nothing to do with the CIA mm. called Oracle, except that it was founded and his first client for the first six years or whatever was just the CIA. Isn't and now he runs all the CIA's cloud servers and computers and like, Isn't that and he's something all, else? yeah. And like when the Patriot Act happened, he was all about mass surveillance. Dude. Like that's the only way to stop terror. It's, and so now that is the company that's overseeing TikTok ever since Project Texas. What is this? But I, I've heard that it's like it's in Taiwan, though. It, what it is, is it's it's a public company. Okay. And it's the, the problem is that it's owned by ByteDance. Like, right. It, it is a subsidiary of ByteDance. It has its own board of directors and its own management structure. And there, there is an argument to be made that like ByteDance could influence it and request. But like, honestly, those arguments feel pretty flimsy. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess what's the difference, though, if both what you said about Oracle why does it matter whether if it, it is Byte Dance influencing or if it's just Oracle playing these dirty games, which they've well, I mean, proven to. You can make an argument that the CIA is allowed to interfere with American media, and even though technically that's the exact opposite of what the CIA is supposed to be allowed to do, right. um, and versus China influence. Like, it, it would be a problem if China was flooding our country with, like, narratives and are and affecting our albums that'd be a big problem that would be mm -hmm. but so i tested it i was like i've actually never seen any anti-china content because the, the the claim was that tiktok is censoring anti-china content right. so we never see it so we aren't critical of china right. like they won't let you post hashtag tiananmen square and stuff like that right. and that they are gathering our data from right. the t so those are the two claims so i made a whole video that was like footage of Tiananmen Square, hashtag Tiananmen Square, mm -hmm. footage of the Uyghurs, hashtag Uyghur Muslims, right. like the whole, everything, t Tibet, all of it. And it, I like did great. It was like hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of views, no problem, no suppression whatsoever. But I, my like anti-CIA videos get taken down all the time. Really? All the time, yeah. My, the most censored topic on TikTok in my content sphere is 100% the CIA, Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. and any of the current like information campaigns, like elections, like you, Joe Biden. What's yeah. their excuse for that? Do they give you one? Oh, they don't really tell you. No, they, they have like six different selections and it's usually, it's like misinformation, harmful content, mm. uh, I don't like, know. Like if it's, if you're talking about the CIA, it's always going to be harmful. It, exactly. Yeah, it true. can be literally anything. Yeah. But like, and they'll take down videos that like are strictly factual information. It's like TikTok is the most censored platform by far. Right. And I mean, if you're talking about China and you want to like deal with China influencing America, like why aren't we talking about China buying up American farmland yeah, and right. China having all of our tech manufacturing mm -hmm. and China like and and like Google all of our companies yep. being up in China like making lots of fentanyl. Well, it, I mean, yeah, I think the bigger problem is not this so much. There's anti-Chinese sentiment that they're uh, censoring. It, it's they're promoting pro-communist propaganda. I don't know if you see that as a TikToker, and I know the algorithm. There is, is so a lot of pro-communist propaganda. That you might not see it, but I think that's the. I mean, at no, least my here, followers are those people. 
Really? Yeah, I mean, because I'm like, I am actually pro-capitalism in a big way, but I'm yeah. very critical of what is currently happening because sure. it's not capitalism. It's it's fucking cronyism. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's corporatocracy. But like, I honestly think that the, that the socialist movement in the youth mm -hmm. is just a natural uprising based upon having this horrible world we live in. Yes. Same I mean, thing happened with the weather underground. That's why I brought boom, them up earlier. Exactly. Like, well, I it happened to, during the strife of the 60s. You yeah. Know, yeah. We're seeing 70s. that at Columbia University this past week. Right. I don't know why more people are not. I mean, it is getting coverage, but that is insane to me. Yeah. Explain it. Uh, so Columbia University, there's a there's a lawn, right? There's a, and they basically set up like a chaz or chop <laughs> kind of area, mm -hmm. a liberated zone, oh, and yeah. they got tents chop. and stuff. Yep. Yep. And well, <clears throat> there was a hearing where the Columbia president uh, came in and got grilled by Congress, absolutely grilled. And the, the very next day, New NYPD comes in, says, uh, "You guys have already been suspended. If you don't clear out of here, we're gonna start arresting you." Well, they started arresting people. Right. Well, then like. Thousands of students, maybe not students, maybe just like Antifa or whatever you want to call it, whatever name you want to call it, but thousands of people then descended onto the campus and were not even letting the cops, like, are like they were blocking the bus that they had the arrestees in, mm -hmm. would not let the bus progress. But these are all like, that's all beside the point in the fact that every single one of these people, it's not an anti, like, Palestine protest, not to get into like the Israel Palestine stuff, but it's pro communist and mm -hmm. pro like they're calling each other comrade, right? They're right, they're yeah. they're uh, advocating for terrorism, right? And we're seeing this, and it's and it's it's like whether it's just like the uh, the woke mind virus mm -hmm. if you call it, mm -hmm. or whatever, but like it, it's at Columbia University in New York City in America's greatest city, if you will, yep. right? And that's what I'm saying. How does this happen organically? It, it, there's no way it does. So, it, like, there's there was no communist. Things like that tent. certainly do not happen organically. And it's not just what's happening at Columbia, but those guys, those people, maybe they did just get this these opinions the day before. But I doubt, I don't think that's the case. They've probably had this drilled into them, mm -hmm. this like pro like communist and uh, just kind of ideology. I, I just think it's been drilled into them, and they've so been thinking this way for a long it's, time. It's. I'm going to go back to the Weather Underground real quick. And, well, that's why I brought it so up. So we'll go Weather Underground, built bombs, killed people, killed cops, went, uh, became fugitives. And when they were arrested, put in prison, like I said earlier, they were um, pardoned by people like Bill Clinton on his last day in office or Cuomo, my former mass murdering governor of New York. Uh, on his last day in office, he took out uh, – he, he pardoned some people from the Weather Underground. Anyway, a lot of them got out, and they became professors. <laughs> Susan Rosenberg yep. is one of those women. Uh, she became a professor like the others and infiltrated, in my opinion, the colleges, which I was a professor for a very long time. I saw this stuff happening all the time, this yep. pro-communist thing, this virus. Um, they wrote books. They became very successful. What did Susan Rosenberg end up doing? She started the Thousand Currents, which then helped act blue, then siphon the money from Black Lives Matter to the Democratic Party. Yep. What, so in, in my opinion, funding more terrorism because those riots were political terrorism a lot like what happened with the weather underground so it just came full circle mm -hmm. and so that's the universities pumping out this idea it's like anti-american uh pro-communist nihilistic violent attitude and that they think that's the only way they're going to change I, things i gotta push back a little bit i'm not saying you're wrong yeah. but i'm just saying i don't think like these kids are coming to the universities yeah. with this mindset because I think it could be in the public schools already. It like, is. Because the public schools it are... It trickles are, down through all of education. Right, the public schools are teachers who were taught by the universities. I mean, so, education is naturally left, yeah. naturally liberal. Right. And liberalism is natu is starting to skew that way. And but I think that liberal, you're... But it's not liberal. I mean, that's what they call not it. Not classically it Yeah, it's totally not liberal. Right. You're absolutely right. Um, left might yeah. be a right. word left for is, it. Because like, it, it's very authoritarian what they're advocating yeah. for. It's Marxist. Yeah, yep. it's yeah. just Marxist. Yep. It's just rebranded as. And I think schools. you're absolutely right that I think that China and Russia, in a different way, mm. which I think China is more of the culprit in this case. Like they are actively subverting America, and we've known they have been for yeah. a long time. How, I just don't think they're though? doing so it through not, the apps in that in the way that the, that our government is telling us that they are, um, because that like. They're, I'm trying to do this without going too deep into Israel Palestine, mm -hmm. but like the the suppression on like if you are on TikTok a lot, pro Palestine content is 
everywhere, right. but it's heavily suppressed. Like a right. great way to get your account banned, a great way to get your videos taken down. Hashtag free Palestine is like destroyed. Um, like the, the sentiment of young, among, because young people yeah. didn't know anything about it right. until now. Right. And then they wanted to know about it. And so they went on TikTok to learn about it. And right. they saw videos of both sides and immediately all of TikTok skewed towards Palestine. Right. And so, and, and, Israel has an extremely powerful, like regardless of your perspective on which is which, Israel yeah. has an extremely powerful lobby in the government. Oh, yeah. And so Israel has the power to lobby our government, yeah. like literally 98% yeah. of our, like. It's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. We've been funding I mean, actually, so if I want to be literal, so we have 100 senators, right? Um, 87 of them, I think, have taken Israeli money. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. I, I forget the exact stat. It's like that many. What, APAC, right? And so, yeah. And so... Yep, someone said APAC in the chat. Yeah, and so so if we're really like if we're really getting down to the reason why TikTok needs to be banned, that that's a far more likely culprit right. for for and and then so the, here's the rumor on on the hill right now is that uh, Ro Khanna just put out a TikTok yesterday or the day before mm. saying that they're about to pass the TikTok ban bill tomorrow. Really? Saturday, they're about to they're about to push it through both House and Senate, attached to the Israel Ukraine aid spending bill. All the all the aid spending, as they, wanted to as they do, yeah. right? and they're about as to they slip do. it through. And they have, and Ro Khanna said that tomorrow night they're planning to push it through both and have Biden sign it tomorrow night. So, and he wants to ban. He Ro Khanna wants, wants to fight for it. Ro he Khanna, wants to fight for it. Yeah, he's calling for TikTokers okay. to come and join him. Ro Khanna's like, calling to fight this whole thing, but he's like blowing the whistle, he's saying one of the only tomorrow is Democrats happens. I've taken seriously because when the Twitter files emerged, he was the only person who said, "Hey, wow, why are we censoring yeah. all these people?" Yeah. Okay, he does a lot of insider trading, but yeah, yeah, he yeah. also does a lot of he has a DC other great. Things. <laughs> well, so the, I mean, is this like where where is this coming from though? Like whether like. You saw, like, right, you said, uh, you know, Marxist. It starts mm -hmm. with professors who teach uh, their students, and those students become teachers in the public school systems, right? But then, like, you're seeing this push online. Do you think that's organic? Just because, no. like, I think it's, I think I mean, it's an it, organic response. If it's response. Oracle controlling TikTok, why is Oracle pushing pro communist and pro Marxist propaganda? Well, maybe because our government's infiltrated by the CCP. <laughs> well, I'm like, is this like a CIA thing? Is this that's like, that's a good where, question. If the CIA is supposed to be on our side, even though they do shady things, where, where are they're they? Not, in this they're battle? not on our well, side. Well, you have to realize that. <laughs> It's, it's not as simple as saying they're pushing content because it's all user generated content. And right. so what they have to do is they have to work within their tool sets to make what they can of it. And like they can suppress stuff and push stuff. And, but like inevitably they have to work with the pool of content that users on TikTok are giving them. Right. And I mean, that's inevitably mostly young Americans making that content in America. Like, well, how about like, there's a lot of people who you'll see on Twitter, like I just saw one yesterday, she might even be AI, I don't know, but other people will say she's a PSYOP or she's CIA influencer, uh -huh. right? Like, isn't that a possibility too? Oh, it's totally right? a thing. Like I mean, people, I get accused of that frequently yeah, and it's like, like I always this. award those. It's like, you should be questioning that. Right. Like you should be questioning, yes. are your influence, because even if you're not a PSYOP, yeah. like Under the Desk News is paid by the Biden administration. Right. She's one of the most popular TikTok news channels. Right. She gets stuff wrong all the time and she's literally paid by the Biden administration. <laughs> but she seems authoritative because yeah. she wears a cool hat and talks like you this should, to the camera. You should be, yeah. you should be <laughs> proud like of the people the who are questioning even you. <laughs> yeah. Because like, it, 100%. I think people should question all of us. Question everything. <laughs> Literally everything. <laughs> don't trust and then verify. Yes. And then still don't trust. Constantly. But I think they're doing that a lot for sure. Yeah. You know, like we said, I think briefly in culture war, like Mockingbird, Operation Mockingbird, mm -hmm. stuff like that, like they infiltrate everything. <laughs> we hardly even got into like, the, the theory of CIA creating gangster rap or promoting or, or modern yeah. art during the Cold War. Yep. We talked about the, cold, the, the counterculture, anti-war stuff in Laurel Canyon. They're not not doing it anymore. Yeah, it's just like you said earlier, like MK Ultra didn't just stop. They're doing it better. They're just doing it better and, yeah. and more widespread and accelerated because of the internet. Yeah. So like, I mean, they've certainly had to change their tactics. Yeah. And it's important to remember too that it's not like they're necessarily getting better at their jobs every like it's a new <laughs> generation of CIA operatives. Right. And like they're yeah. It's like for example, the Richard Helms right. generation, the Richard Helms George Bush Senior generation, they were really good at their jobs. I've yeah. been digging deep into some uh, documents about their drug smuggling operations mm -hmm. out of Vietnam that are largely unreported. That's like mind blowing yeah. how good they were at their jobs. That's a whole, cra I should show you that yeah, document dude, after this stream. That that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's Rothschilds, George Bush senior and Richard Helms collaborating to smuggle drugs during Vietnam directly to <sighs> Vietnam servicemen crazy. and like into American homeland, like dude. hundreds of billions of dollars in secret bank accounts. It's mm. crazy. Yeah. It's like when I hear China making fentanyl at the border yeah. and sending it over, I'm like, 
you mean the CIA? Yeah. Like, like, or are they working together? It like, could, I, so it could be China because right. it would be it would be very logical payback right. for the opium wars. Yeah, I was say, and we're it's dude, advantage like, of for something. sure. Like if, if yeah. CIA started the you know the the drug crisis in the eighties, yeah. China's just taking advantage of it. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Uh, yep. It's just convenient. But it's also important to remember that George Bush Senior was like all up in the opium trade over in Vietnam <laughs> during the Vietnam era. Uh -huh. George Bush Jr. just goes and invades Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Taliban sucks, but they outlaw the production of opium, like right. down to almost nothing. Right. And as soon as Bush gets in there, it's like <laughs> opioid epidemic, Dude. let's go. It's all it is. It's just drugs and sex. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not guns. rock and roll anymore. And, and guns. guns. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever yeah. sells the drugs, <laughs> sex, guns, kids, yep. that's the... Uh, that's literally all... They're happened. the rich ones and they're the ones that are the problem. That's the economy. Yeah. You know, that's why there's those four billionaires subpoenaed with the Epstein thing a year ago. You don't really know their names. Yep. Like they are in close proximity to a legitimately evil man. We're all worried about lower level people, which we should still be worried about. But like we got people up here we got to be talking about. You yeah. Know? That's the target. And these are the people that are not just billionaires. They're the people controlling these corporations that are controlling the narrative, right? Yep. You talked about Oracle earlier. It reminded mm -hmm. me of, um, of like government products right like corporations yeah. that you yeah. might not know like darpa right uh-huh do you know who the founder of darpa was no it was jeff bezos grandfather <laughs> wow i forget which one i should look that up it was one of his grandfathers uh that tracks interesting right yeah and then like did not that much distance between that man and a man who would create a company that kind amazon of is a total cia world. company at this point like dude, completely yeah dude, revolutionize the economy they tell the post office to work on sundays yeah. that's crazy to me like they should have but they always head off and now the post office yeah. is delivering amazon packages so yeah. it seems like it's a government thing to me i don't know but it's it's bizarre you know and, and bezos is also involved in narrative building on top of that because he, he owns is, the he post owns Wapo, yep. i mean i'm currently working with a bunch of the people out of the gamestop space and the finance space mm. to expose that like there's like solid evidence that bezos has actually been working so it's like Amazon has a vested interest in taking over whole sectors of business like Sears, for example. Wow. And and banks have a vested interest in shorting companies that are bound to fail mm -hmm. and like any financial institutions like head funds and such. And and like and then there's a whole sector called the advisors that have an invested interest in getting paid by failing businesses to right. come in and help them Whoa. not fail. But often they fail anyways, right? Who, who could help? Yeah. And and the people that work in both the Amazon world and the banking world like Bezos has used to be in the hedge fund world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people have used to be advisors because that's how you get into these worlds. And there's like very solid evidence that there's a triangle of attack whereby you start by sort of undermining a little bit and spreading some bad news and then shorting a company and then their stock starts to go down and then they start to get distressed. Amazon moves in on the their- di The diapers thing. Exactly, yeah. or like the Toys R Us thing. Yeah. It's like, to, then let's move in on Sears and then yeah. let's move on on GameStop and video yeah. games. And yeah. it's like, and then we'll just short them to hell, consult them while they're on the way down and then Yep. and then take over their business. It's like the Time Magazine article about the network of corporations and people that took out Trump for the election, yep. right? Like they, in that article, you know what I'm talking about? Tim mm -hmm. references a lot. Soon after the election, after Trump had already been saying it was stolen, uh, Time Magazine wrote that, you know, Trump talked about a conspiracy theory about the election. He is somewhat correct in that there's a consortium <laughs> of people working together against him for years, right? And it's right. kind of like yeah. that triangle effect of like, you take him from over there. It's, it's yep. a war on every possible front. And that's how they, in their mind, took him out. You know, yep. they don't say he's right about all the election fraud and stuff, but they're saying that it took all these people to work together. A conspiracy well, of people. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It, it, it's this this communist kind of like, we did it together. Like, yeah. look yeah, at yeah, the camaraderie. Yeah. Look at what we all can right. achieve. That's what the fist means, yeah. right? It's yeah. the five, I forget how they... Well, yeah, five fingers makes the fist. Right, 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 right. There we go. I think that's what it is. Yep. Um, yep. Well... Let's go to Super Chats real quick because we got a few to read yes. and then we'll jump into this Laurel, Laurel Canyon and yeah, Charles yeah. Manson stuff. We'll Sick. finish with a bang. Sick. Yeah, that's some good um, stuff. So, Perturbed Alpaca says, the mind of man is holy. Mm. Truth. Uh, DC and DC says, Larry Page called Elon uh, I'm not a specialist for wariness of AI. Speciest? I'm not sure what... what Speciest? Word Speciest, hmm. maybe. I'm not sure uh, what he was trying to say there. Interesting. Um... He says again, Ian, how are MJ and Diddy similar and different? Oh, mm. good. Those are good. That's a good quick rabbit hole. Um, how are MJ and Diddy similar and different? Well, they're opposite. As in MJ was an artist that was working against the system and starting to call out the record executives and label that was corrupting his life. And he started to buy it. And he had basically bought out Sony. 
and he basically owned he was buying out other people's label like other people's music yeah and he had 50 percent of the company yeah he bought all he told him exactly (laughs) he was kicking ass and like and they and they like went hard on the slander they went hard like they they branded him as wacko jacko which is literally the name of a monkey cartoon like straight up like racist like you're a monkey you black guy and um and the the press just went crazy and the fbi did a like a 10 year investigation of Michael Jackson and found zero evidence of him being a pedophile. Right, they right. confiscated all of his electronic devices, every like zero right. evidence that he was a pedophile. And that HBO documentary fell apart within a year. Yeah, it's it, he was not. He clearly was not. Right. And um and so then they had to resort it's like well the slander is not working like this is not working and he his whole life his security guard was like his dad basically. It was like his his security guard was this deeply trusted dude I think named Dan or Bob, it was like a really normal. And he, there's a letter you can find uh, that's like really touching that he wrote to his security guy that was like his dad. And when he, when this guy turned 70, he retired from being security. And Michael Jackson continued to pay for his health care for wow. the rest of his life till he was 80 because he loved him so much. And he like was his father because he, he was like didn't have a real father figure. His father was pretty brutal. And so then from then on, he was protected by a rolling cycle of various security people that right. he didn't really trust until he wound up with Fahim Muhammad. Right. And boom, he's gone. Um, Whereas Diddy is a corrupt piece of gangster that's like yeah. mu- that probably killed Tupac and might have killed Biggie yep. and definitely killed a few other people yep. and drugs and clearly is doing like messed up sexual stuff. And if you want to hate Diddy anymore, just read the lawsuit with his girlfriend Cassie. Yeah, and you put it really well. Like they're opposites. Like Pure MJ would have been the victim of a Diddy. Yeah, right. Like, exactly. That's what Diddy wanted, yep. and it's disgusting. And, and I see Prince. Should we should be talking about Prince? As well, he 100%. was killed with fentanyl. Uh, he thought he was taking a painkiller. It turned out to be fentanyl. It's no good. one knows who gave him the, fat, the counterfeit. I mean, yep. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Just a, and dude, yeah. Prince and MJ are the very similar. Fe- like, in my opinion, some of the best artists that have ever lived, and also rebels, uh, yeah. like like Kanye. When I was talking about him earlier, and both talking about all, well, all three talking about contracts. Yep. You know, and it's worth pointing out too that all three are highly talented, true musicians, right? Yeah. And you Legit. can notice when you look at the people that Diddy promoted, and someone else pointed this out to I me. Mean, it's not my original thought, but it's a really good point that like. If you promote someone that has no talent, you inherently own them yeah. because the moment that you stop promoting them, they're nothing. Yep. Like, but you can make them into everything if you just put them on the billboards, put them on the magazines. Sure. And so the, the the real issue is actually the talented musicians because yep. they're harder to control. Yep. Kanye's are way harder to control yeah. than like Lil Uzi Vert's. Bro, look yeah. at Biggie. <laughs> Biggie was trying to break his contract with Diddy before that. There's rumors down. that Biggie and Tupac were going to found their own label. Dude, right? I wish that was a timeline. Because yeah. I was more of a Tupac fan. It'd be a great timeline. Uh, Biggie's all obviously great, but but yeah, yeah. Biggie also with the contracts and yep. instead Diddy, who then profited off that man's death to yeah. this day. Yeah, in a big way. Let uh, Latveria ten twenty four says in response to the Tucker uh, JRE experience, YouTube shenanigans or the views overflowed integer math value and rolled mm. over to zero. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Could be actually. Surge.com says Psy operatives culture crisis. Nice. What's up, Surge? What up, Surge? Dash yeah. Fortune says Happy Friday. Boys, 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 boys. Boys in the house. <laughs> a serious man says pop conspiracy crisis. Oh, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth 213 says Psychist Michio said on C yeah, Psychist Michio said on uh CBS or physicist, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Michio said on CBS eight years ago that we uh, caused a monsoon in Vietnam yep. during the war. Michio Kakao. That's right. He admitted it. Yep. Crazy. Yep. He also talked topics. about lasers and, and, cr- and pulling lightning out of clouds. Oh, remember, dude. remember, you're you're a crazy wacko if you talk about lasers. Yeah, sorry, I'm not an <laughs> astrophysicist, brain surgeon. TikTok took down my video about joking about putting blue on, so... Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a lie. That's so a wear blue, you're theory. saying? Yeah, definitely wear blue. Uh, well, that's that's just basic. Like they tell you that when you're playing soccer as a kid. Like certain colors will keep you cooler when you're playing. Yeah, but yeah. we got to protect ourselves from the lasers. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, that's true. They didn't have lasers then. Uh, the rumbling says Shane needs to post a chart of his level of clouds. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Andrew Jacobs says Mary's on Megyn Kelly's show. Yes. Sick. Yeah, it is pretty sick. Yeah, yeah that's it was, cool. she uh, she got that opportunity. Hell yeah. And she was going to be on the show today, but we we're like, no, yep. you, you got to do yeah, this. Yeah, totally. Go. That's awesome. Cool. Um, I didn't know what had what had come up. That's great. We'll get one more in here. 52 Games Podcast says Ishtar Demon is why men and women are interchanging. I'm not that's referring to that. some Baphomet stuff, I think. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's hermaphroditic that's right. stuff. And a lot of there. child sacrifice, I believe. Yep. All which of that. Which is something I think we still do. 
to um, this day. So Shane, uh, we just don't talk about depends it. Depends on how you, yeah, it depends how you define it. They, Which, they uh, say it's abortion. I say it's human sacrifice. What with the, the uh, like Baphomet and you know ancient demons uh, liking uh, sacri- sacrificing of your children also happen in a mm. lot of cultures. But I was just saying, like I today, guess it was more like they were more willing to do it back then. And now we have to. It's almost no, like that we, we gotta are get willing as a culture to do it today too, because that's what I believe. Sort abortion. of, <laughs> sort of. I don't. Well, abortion, sure, but I'm more so thinking of like all these parents that are like taking, you know, uh, their kids and you know, pumping them full of hormones and doing these different the surgeries. Yeah. But they, you know, some of these parents are fooled. <laughs> Like that's right. why I say, do the demons know oh, they're demons? Oh, they're all they're all fooled. Right. Like none of them understand the science of what they're doing to those kids. No, oh, they're, well, they're no, acting but ancient, out of they like, think good faith. Ancient yeah. South American, like you know, na- like the native cultures, they right. knew what they were doing. Right. Yeah. There was no question about it. They said we we're intentionally sacrificing this person uh, to please the gods. Yeah. Right. So. Yep. No, um, but that will go. Sorry, I know you're trying no, to. No, no, like, no. That fine. will go back to the modern god of god, lowercase g, of nihilism, and mm. this human sacrifice is like just destroy myself. The, what you're talking about with like the the puberty blockers and, and cutting off the genitals is like a delayed self sacrifice. You're sacrificing sure. yourself, but you're still around enough for the government and big pharma to suck your blood. So I guess it's big pharma and like every time Pfizer or even the doctors that promote this and recommend this, I I almost feel like they're the demons. And yeah, they're just we're, we're just suckers. I mean, oh, humans 100%. are easily corruptible. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, like, honestly, like I want to take a second here to too to say that like I'm not trying to say trans people are evil. I'm trying to say that like. I feel horrible for people that are being victimized by that without absolutely. full understanding of what they're doing. Because well, like, blocked it. I don't know if you yeah, saw that in the news. Right, like this exactly. Week, they Lots of places are starting to blockers for minors. <laughs> Illegal. It's like wow, I like nothing but respect if you're a fully intelligent adult that yeah. really wants to do that to your body. Like, do your Go, thing, do whatever. Your thing. Yeah. But like, I don't agree with 99% it. of y'all don't like. If you would condemn a teenage boy for taking steroids to right. get big and swole, yeah, right. all the bays, yeah. That's like right. a million times safer right. than taking puberty blockers, taking reverse sex hormones cutting off your genitals right. like those are irreversible things and a lot of people don't realize it and i live in a very blue city right. where like i know people that halfway transitioned and stopped and tried wow. to reverse and it's like you can't yep. your voice won't change back those physical changes will never go back your your <sighs> so puberty sad. is like you will probably be sterile your whole life yep. and that's just tra- and it's like that's not really their fault because they're born into this culture and yep. they're given this propaganda and there's like and it's like who gave them that propaganda yeah. and it's like the there's no more profitable scheme than getting someone hooked onto a medical scheme that they are literally need to take their whole life someone says it doesn't matter if you believe the ritual like cat williams said it's just about the ritual being done <laughs> that's a good point so that's great um Transitioning to these uh, these uh, books that you mentioned, we talked a little bit about it this morning. We've got Laurel Canyon, and we've got another yeah. book about Charles Manson and the CIA and the crazy 60s. Shane, I, I mean, dive in wherever you think is best. So, uh, yeah, we mentioned this a bunch today on Culture War and on, on Pop Culture, uh, and I just think it's interesting because this is maybe like the second or third generation of like the Hoover beginning yeah. of like the, the narrative building of – uh, counterculture or you know tricking everyone into believing your counterculture so anyway weird scenes from Laurel Canyon inside Laurel Canyon is about this like mountain in Laurel Canyon where uh, the counterculture Where's anti-war Laurel movement Canyon? it's in LA okay it's like uh, just out the edge of the valley of LA beautiful spot exiting into the mountains yeah there. I was just driving is it like developed or kind oh, of yeah. rural I mean there's like giant mountain uh, it's a giant mountain and there's oddly like mansions being built into it that I don't think could exist yeah. like it's, it's like they're gonna fall off the right, cliff right. but i was just driving there like a week ago uh and it's you know you dr- go to the bottom and there's frank zappa's house the mamas and the papas started there but the theory is and according to this book and you can look up a lot of the literature and we'll connect that to chaos in a minute is that the cia saw that the anti-war movement at, in the beginning was like clean you know guys short haircuts and suits being like war is bad yeah. and they were like we need to create a way to make this bad because we like war, you know, yeah. is what they were saying. So to discredit they, the anti-war movement. Discredit right? it. And they, according to books like this, injected LSD and counterculture, like icons, quote unquote, into this movement to kind of create this image of depravity, nihilism, uh, the rock and roll, sex, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll image that we know today. Uh, and the, the book says, like, look at all these connections. There's, there's the people in the mamas and the papas uh, who are connected to CIA or, or, and doing odd uh, experiments. There's Frank Zappa, whose father was in charge of 
I forget what experiment he was doing, but the, the bigger one takeaway is Jim Morrison's dad was the guy in charge of the Gulf of Tonkin, yeah. which was like, you know, when uh, it's so the ship weird that all these like super influential. That's a cut you off. <laughs> no, yeah. It's just like with Bezos and uh, I mean, you talk about the Rockefellers and the Clintons and it's just like, yep. it's so crazy. You're like, oh yeah, by the way, this guy's grandfather <laughs> it was right. also like an integral part to this historical event. Right. And with the Jim Morrison thing, you could say the counter argument would be, well, kids rebel against their parents. Right. And he's just, but it is weird that, I mean, his dad, like the Gulf of Tonkin started the Vietnam War for us. Right. right? That's like a, a, I don't know if you call it a false flag or not, but the ship wasn't attacked. They De got the yeah, wrong information. Definitely a false flag. Yeah, and then yeah. <laughs> whether or not they like, because the, the the official narrative would be like, though the information just didn't make it in time. Okay, sure. Jim Morrison's dad started the Vietnam War, yeah. <laughs> and then and then his son became this like revolutionary rebel figure, right? right? So on top of all of that, you, so we got the counterculture. People think of that as like the hippies, anti-war. Um, on top of all that, all happening in, inside Laurel Canyon. And LSD originally being leaked from the CIA. <laughs> quote unquote, LSD. Like, all of that is happening. Yep. And then the mountain observatory is on top of this mountain. Um, and that is a giant facility where they say 20,000, at least 20,000 propaganda films were made by the government. And people like Marilyn Monroe were going in and out. And it's a giant. Is it like a Department of Defense de facility or a well, military perhaps, facility? Uh, Who knows it's, exactly what it was. It's, it's yeah. But you can look it up. You, you can look it up. Yeah, it's up there. It's on Google Earth. Look it up. Google yeah. Maps. You can, I think there's a Wikipedia page for it, too. But What's it called? Mountain Overlook Observatory, I believe. If you so if you add Laurel Canyon in there, you'll probably yeah. find it. Yeah, it's, it's owned by Jared Leto now. It's famous oh for be, for having <laughs> massive film sets, film studios. It's famous for being where they would. So they, their yep. claim is that it's where they filmed the atomic bomb tests. Yep. Like <laughs> uh, uh, look out footage, Mount, so to look speak. Out Mountain. Station. Yep. Okay. Pull it up. Is yeah, it a yeah, giant yeah. white facility? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I've been by this place two times in the last like six months. And the first time when you drove by, you could yep. look in. Just the other day, it's all blacked out with like really? chain link fence. Well, I guess it's private. It could just now. be. When I was there the first time, it was owned by Jared Leto too. I mean, oh, Jared really? Leto's had it for forever. Yeah, but he bought it years ago. They say oh. there's tunnels under this thing that connect to the Zappa compound, which is at the bottom of the mountain. Um, so it's just very interesting. There's a lot of conspiracies about it. You think about the counterculture in the '60s, and I, I mentioned earlier the assassinations and the war, and all this the fear rituals taking place, and this music that was. You know, turn into the, the summer of love and Woodstock. And some important context is that yeah. that movement started in Laurel Canyon. Like the first right. concerts were in Laurel Canyon. Right. Like it's not like it's a random canyon. It's like really where that it movement emanated. was from. from right. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Uh, so the theory being the CIA did all this to, to discredit the, the anti-war stuff. And then I connect that to um, to chaos because okay that's tr about charles manson supposedly being a victim of mk ultra and working for the cia and uh getting away with a lot of things when he shouldn't have like crossing the border into mexico when he shouldn't have been leaving the country and yep. uh getting you know checked on uh and people should have known what he was doing but they didn't uh so tom o'neill wrote chaos and that book is a very deep dive into everyone involved in manson and how it seemed like it's just another one of these situations where the government had created a monster and they wanted to unleash him. Does, did he? But did he know he was a monster? I think he. I mean, he used to see these. I believe interviews he probably knew. He, I think he knew he was. <laughs> I think he knew there was something wrong with him. But did he know how I depraved and evil it was? I, you never know. I believe he probably did think that. You know, like. He's almost proud of it, you know. His in interviews a way are pretty wild. The, yeah. But he could also just be an actor. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. all of this is fake, right? Because like this is, this is like the beginning of I've, I would call it like the simulation where like uh, it's not ones and zeros. It's like this fake narrative laid on top of reality yeah. that is coming out of a place like this, right? Yeah. They're pumping out all these propaganda films and creating. He said twenty thousand. As far as we know, I don't even know what those are, right? Right. But like, right, who, right. I, you, no one really knows what's going on inside this place. But it's like a DARPA, right? It's yeah. like another government facility creating things. Um, but then the '60s, all this is happening, and then they unleash their monster. If you want to believe the CIA had Manson under their control, which I do, and then that created like the one of the biggest scars of a generation after all those assassinations that was like oh no more hitchhiking no more open doors it was like there's a yeah. a, a cult maniac the death cult maniac running around well let's tie two of the things you just talked about together yep. is 
they see this anti-war movement that's really clean cut and needs to be discredited so they discredit it with the hippie movement and the right. drugs and all that music and everything and then they're like oh shit right. they, that's not like that actually backfired in a big way because yeah. like suddenly they're taking LSD and they're actually like questioning more <laughs> systems right. and suddenly they're actually like organizing in new ways right. and like going against corporations it's like we need to discredit the hippies too and it's like <laughs> right. in another cycle keep, of that because really it's like we gave them the lsd which is an extremely powerful psychedelic yeah. drug with yeah. a lot of side effects that they the cia clearly did not understand if you right. read the history of the cia right. lsd experiments because they were giving people lsd under the most awful evil circumstances oh, yeah. and a lot of times without telling them right oh, and when yeah. you give people lsd under those circumstances the results are wildly different than right. when you give them to them at like some music festival surrounded by love right. and right. peace and or hippies like uh, I think the British Army did one. There, there's footage of that, and they're all just like they. It was a more pleasant uh, kind of experience and setting, but they couldn't control these soldiers. Yeah, right. they're just complete goofballs, just doing their thing. Like, frolicking around, right. and they're like, "Yeah, this is a." Uh, we don't really know how to control this thing. So I don't think they realized what they were giving to the hippie movement when they gave them the LSD, right. so to speak. I and I was, it sounds like what you're suggesting is that Charles Manson, in some ways, was like, we need to release a hippie monster to instill fear of this drug. I think, yeah, whether or not they were in control of him, they had something to do with him. Yeah. Right? And he got away with a lot of stuff they shouldn't have. And yeah. they knew about um, Spawn Ranch and all this stuff. Yeah. And they didn't do anything. Um, I think they wanted chaos like i said earlier mm -hmm. which is why i think tom o'neill names the book chaos and if anyone wants to look into operation monarch um which has to do with uh basically creating sexual abuse trauma child trauma um mind programming in relation to abuse and trauma which is super dark um it's a largely still redacted and classified mm -hmm. operation that links in a lot to this sort of like the Manson effect here where there's a lot of theories and we don't necessarily have we don't necessarily have a lot of like proof right. one way or the other right. but there's a lot of theories and evidence to show that like if they can create trauma in a young person and then kind of like mold and break and shape yeah. and drug those people in the right ways they can create patsies they can create right. um you know psycho killers they can create a lot of different things that can be very useful in different yep. ways yep. and i think monarch was specifically designed to try to understand i could be wrong but i think it was to try to understand dissociative identity disorder wow. so it's like how can you intentionally split a person's identity and then have trigger words that will trigger their dissociative identity so you can have like i mean the classical movie version would be like the sleeper assassin mm -hmm. that's triggered by the word manchurian but candidate. i'm sure I'm, yeah exactly yeah. It, i'm sure it's not that clean as like the manchurian candidate right. concept would right. make you seem but who I wonder knows? if they perfected it. But like this stuff at the Floral Canyon is so interesting because what we were talking about today, right, with Diddy. Yeah. And people who may or may not be involved with the feds in pop culture, embedded deeply in pop Getting culture. Getting inserted. Creating or taking power over uh, these people who have and will become large voices for certain movements, right? Yeah. So whether it's gangster rap and the theory being that they help promote it i wouldn't know if they created it but i think they helped promote it they hijack it like yeah. they do most things to be like well we need more degeneracy well i mean have you heard about the ice cube and i mean several people have made allegations about the, the meeting with the prison industry where they like actually were talking about it was in the early 90s ice cube was spoken so. about it. he's i think ice cube claimed he was at the meeting yeah. um where he talked about a meeting with a prison industry executive and there's a famous letter online that's from an anonymous person that claimed that you you know take it or leave it it's an anonymous source but the claims that come from these different angles are that there was a meeting with several record executives in the early 90s with a man that represented the prison industry in its nascent days right. and he was basically saying like we're going to do this deal with the with the country where we're going to fill the prisons and you're going to make gangster rap we need your music to focus on these things right. and you'll get these kids and basically it was just orchestrating the, the evolution of gangster rap it's crazy um and yeah prisons have deals where where uh I don't know the specifics off the top of my head, but it's like prisons have deals with the government to keep them at 90 cent occupancy yep. all the time. Yep. Huh. Um, and, it's, and, and then they just do this, like with the modern art thing with Jackson Pollock. And there's a lot of modern art that I genuinely love. Mm -hmm. And I don't think all modern art was created by the CIA, but we do know now that to fight the Russians in the Cold War, because the Russians were cracking down on anything that might have been art that was subversive. Is we, that why you're so brutalist? Like a lot, of, right. especially the stuff brutalist, that's still around. Brutalist, even though I think that most is mostly gross. But yeah, it, it, I'm, ta I'm, I'm even talking about like just Jackson Pollock throwing paint oh, on okay. a yeah. on a canvas and being like, "This is beautiful art." But they would inject money into it to make it more worth uh, worth more. Right? Kind of troll them in a certain way, like just be like, "Look, American art's good," but also right. to launder money.
Right. Art is right. the yeah. most important. Like art no, has always so been the best money laundering scheme of all. Right. And the art industry. Anytime you see someone that's an art philanthropy, anytime you're reading a Wikipedia yep. page and that motherfucker has a section about supporting an art museum or yep. art, whatever, it's like, <laughs> look deeper into that one because that's it's not art. Weirder and weirder, especially when you see like that like abstract art and those perf the performative art mm -hmm. that yeah. you see online. It's just getting weirder mm -hmm. and weirder and weirder. Yeah, which goes back to Abramovich. Yeah, and then you wind uh, yeah. up in yeah. yeah, and then you wind oh. up in uh, in what are the 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 Podesta's house and you look at their art and it's like. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. I've seen head art. Obviously, too. don't look up the Podestas. Obviously, yeah. that's all conspiracy theories. And it was debunked <laughs> by Politico. So don't worry about whatever the Podestas and Mr. Wiener were up to. No, yeah, don't. I don't Hillary know Clinton Wiener is a good a, job. a good chick. All great people. She's cool. Brave yeah. and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, um, if only she had been our leader. I'm going to get these last super chats in just in case it spawns another yeah. conversation. But yeah. we're getting close to that time. Um, Shane H. Wilder says, Kellen and Cashman, as hosts, it is a requirement that I meme you. And you have been memed. Look, I don't make the rules. <laughs> have you seen any of his creations? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, they're, they're so yeah. awesome. They're great. The manic, the manic Mustache says, I did way too many drugs in the 90s to be watching this. I'll put my Tim Foyle hat on <laughs> and wait for Brett and Mary's return. <laughs> well, I appreciate the honesty there. Gordon Shumway says, Kellen, you might be on to something. The modern sacrifice of children to a god goes in line with thinking that the modern god is the self. They terminate their mm. kids to focus on themselves. Mm. That's a good point. So dark. And a serious man says, Raymond Chandler hinted about Laurel Canyon stuff going back into the 40s. Mm -hmm. Little sister. Um, yeah, I mean, those, those are all our super chats. Uh, I, I, I want to um, thank you guys yeah. for <laughs> helping me through this. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's been uh, thank you for everyone watching, too. It, it's been uh, it's been very fun. Yeah, it's it's definitely one. been different without yeah. Brett and Mary. <laughs> they definitely have a flavor. Um, uh, any final thoughts before uh, we give our outros? Just keep questioning everything. Keep questioning everything. And in the music industry, especially keep asking. So it, we saw it with Epstein yep. where they wanted it to end with Epstein. They wanted that to be the yeah. whole story. Yep. Yeah. They gave us Diddy and they want the story to end with Diddy. And it's really obvious it doesn't end with Diddy. Where Every, is he? Does they, do they know oh, he, there's no arrest warrant yet. So yeah. he's just chilling. He's, you know, but laying he's not super stateside, low. He? Yeah. he might be. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think anyone really yeah. necessarily knows. He had that one video. There were sightings. Where he was like dancing or laughing or something post. Oh, so he's not raids. worried. Not yet. Or at least he, pretending not to be. Because he's a fed. Yeah, there's a lot going <laughs> on. <laughs> but, what's, but what matters is that we all collectively know that there's more. Yes. And we're not waiting and stopping. We're not like done when Diddy gets got. Like there is way more there that right. we want to know. Right. We got uh, another super chat just came in. Uh, Francisco Sanchez Jr. says, paying my dues. A nice change of pace from Taylor Swift, JoJo Siwa, and other stuff. <laughs> Appreciate I you, mean, homie. Yeah, but it goes from being so like... You know, it, not I don't want to say innocent. That's not the right word, but you know, like kind of like simple Hollywood stuff, just to the depravity <laughs> and the dark. We're pulling stuff. the curtain yeah. right back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this exactly. is the ugly machine. Yeah. Uh, DC says, "Nice one, Kellen. Thank you, thank you, um, Ian. Thank you so much for uh, totally. being on both pleasure. shows today. No, thanks to you, man, for running the board two times. Yeah, you killed no it. No problem. Yeah, killing it. it. It's been a it's yeah. been a busy Friday, but I love it. Uh, do you want to shout anything out? Um, yeah, I would love if people would go and join my new YouTube channel that I'm starting to work on more. I come from the TikTok lands and would love to grow the long form content at Cancel This Conspiracy. I'm also on Rumble because YouTube censors a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's my game right now. Cancel This Conspiracy. YouTube is yeah, YouTube it. is Cancel This Conspiracy. And I'm also Cancel This Clothing Company is how most people know me from TikTok cool. and my website, et cetera. So. Awesome. Yeah, Shane, it, was a, it was a pleasure. You can find me at Shane Cashman everywhere online. I got a bunch of books out. You can find them at shanecashman.com and a uh, new book on the way. So I'll see you all this soon. All, this is like always on a pop. This is always how pop culture goes. We got two more super chats. Nice. Rhaegar says, does this mean I have to throw away my, <laughs> my Puff Daddy and the family album from Kmart from 1997? Yes, burn it. With the, <laughs> with the censored words. It was my first CD ever. No, you have to shove it up your bunghole and leave it there forever. <laughs> Gordon Shumway says, great show, guys. Huge black pills. I need a few shots tonight to help me not dwell on this all night. Just don't take shots of Ciroc. High oh, voltage. Yeah, dude, wait, real quick, though. No black pills. 
right? Like I think it's yeah. we the the positivity is that we are talking about it and we are understanding how dark all this shit is and that we can we're all talking Straight, about it. Straight clear fun. gold pills from here, That's baby. It, whichever dude, pill it is, 100%, it's like yeah. 100%. Don't we can't be depressed. 2024 is the year that all lies will be exposed. Yes. I will say yeah, we were talking about like really dark stuff, but we we were laughing a whole lot yeah. the yes. whole time. It so. was already happening all along. Yes. It's just that now we know. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, would you rather not? It know? was way worse when no. we didn't know because no. now we can make a difference. Ignorance now we can bliss make change. Is a psyop. <laughs> That's a phrase that the CIA created. Straight up out of Laurel Cain. You're exactly damn straight. <laughs> Uh, high yep. voltage says, "Good job, Kellen. Now get back in the cuck chair." Hey, thank <laughs> hey. you, thank you. That's that's the uh, that's the cuck chair. So when I was shadowing Brett the other day to learn how just exactly oh, that's how the, uh, the bacon or the sausage was made, rather. I mean, we uh, could always call up setting. Destiny and see if he needs a new job. Oh, <laughs> I heard yeah, Destiny I'm might be in the market. Yeah, host, oh yeah, that's a good thing to call out. I'm hosting the Minds Fest in Austin, Texas, at Austin, Texas, at the Vulcan. There's gonna be a lot of cool people there. Destiny will be there. Cool. You should ask him about his Instagram scandal lately. Oh, I want to yeah. know. I got a lot of questions for that guy. Yep. Um, you guys can follow me at Kellen PDL. Please, uh, thank you or thank you guys so much for tuning in. Even though Brett and Mary are out, uh, we'll be back next Monday at 3 p.m. Uh, we got Timcast IRL tonight at 8 p.m. and then a nice long weekend. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Any uh, any last words? No, it's been real. Just thanks really for watching. It. it was fun, man. Talking. Yeah, likewise. All right, guys. Later. See you next Peace. time. Peace.